Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast, back for another week of Brilliant Idiotness. Yes, and this episode is brought to you by Fume. Listen, cold turkey may be great on sandwiches, but there's a better way to break your bad habits. And we're talking about our sponsor, Fume. And they look at the problem in a different way. See, Fume is an innovative and award-nominated device that does just that. Instead of electronics, Fume is completely natural. Instead of vapor, Fume uses flavored air. And instead of harmful chemicals fume uses all natural delicious flavor so join fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the journey pack today head to tryfume.com that is t-r-y-f-u-m.com use the code idiots to save 10 percent off when you get the journey pack today that is tryfum.com and use the code idiots to save an additional 10 percent off your order today Head to tryfume.com slash idiots and use the code idiots to save an additional 10% off of your order today. Now let's start the show. Yo, Hezzy. What's up, baby? How was your weekend? I saw that you are, uh, they calling you Hezzy of the Hamptons now. Yo, Hampton, Hampton Hezzy. Hezzy. Let me tell you something. Drugs are amazing. Yes, they are. Drugs are so good. Especially plant-based medicine. But also chemicals. Okay, what'd you have? Um, I mean, it was a cornucopia of things. It was an ecstasy pill, and that's Ooh. exactly what it induced. It was so much fun. It was so enjoyable. And I and I I will say this: whatever joy you feel, and I wonder if you've experienced this with plant-based, but Whatever joy you feel from chemically induced drugs, you have to pay for on the back end. You mean like the, the come down? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, as yeah. high as you go, let's yeah. say you go to uh, let's say you go to uh, ten points higher than you would naturally go. Yeah. You owe ten points. Yeah, plant. I mean, plant based medicines do that, especially shrooms. Shrooms will they bring you cause you a, a stomachache. You know what I mean? If you don't yeah. hydrate and drink water, that's why the main thing to do when you on that stuff is hydrate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it was you just, didn't do that. I. You probably yeah, drink no. liquor. Bro, no, that's the other thing. This is the first time I've ever done like a, like a molly or an ecstasy or something like that and um, and didn't really drink. I probably had three drinks the whole night and that was my goal because when we would go to Burning Man every single fucking year, we'd be on molly and like some Adderall or whatever to stay up. I sound like an absolute like junkie right now, but uh, we'd be drinking alcohol, right? Like, Al, we'd start drinking alcohol at... Nine o'clock, ten yeah. o'clock, and then you're drinking until eight in the morning. So you have fucking twenty drinks. You wake up the next day, you feel horrible. I always attributed that to the alcohol. No, the Molly. Oh, the Molly. No, that's the alcohol. It's the alcohol yeah, 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 fucking yeah. draining your system, and then you have the compound hangover. There is a hangover, obviously, when you do Molly or ecstasy. Water. Yep, that's all I drink. You got to drink mad water when you're on that Molly. I've never done Molly, but everybody that. Tell me about Molly. He said you got to drink mad water. You got to drink mad water. It is so much fun. I don't want kids. Obviously, do it. Uh, it is great. Stupid. It is fantastic. This right? is, we're having a grown no. conversation. We just we, are we supposed to talk about our lives or not? No, we are. No, no. I, I, kids don't do it. What I would say is that anybody that does it just understand you are taking out a debt that you have to pay. And I think what happens is for a lot of people is they take out the debt and they're spending all that money, that happiness in that night, and then the next day they feel horrible and then they go, well, I'll just take out another debt. Yeah, and yeah, take yeah. out another debt and take another debt. And eventually, you gotta go bankrupt. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you have to go, okay, the next two days, I'm gonna be lower than I normally am and I have to accept that. Oh, people say that about, every, I mean, you feel that about, I, I've never experienced that, but I know people who've had like really like amazing shroom trips. Yeah. But when you sober and you got to get back to that reality, Rough. you know, you don't feel that high no more. So that's yeah. when a lot of the depression and everything yep. else yep. sets in. And I guess that's where addiction can come into play, right? Yep. Because then you're like, oh, I got to start, I got to do this more and more to, to stay up here. Up here. Yeah, and yeah, you yeah. know you can be there in a fucking second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the scary thing. So it's not something I do a lot. Usually, you know, this time of year we would be at Burning Man. We decided not to go to Burning Man Ooh, this year. God bless. Bruh. Or maybe not. Maybe they had the best experience I, this I, year. I think it would have been the best. Yeah, being stuck out there in the, in the water. I guess, I guess the, the, the not knowing when you're going to be unstuck. That would drive me you. crazy. But you know what that would make me do? And I thought about this. Submit. Live in the moment. You have to submit. You got to submit. It. Like that. You, you, and by the way, we should be like that all the time. But in yeah. that moment, what are you going to do? You can't do it. You're going to think about, oh, man, I'm going to miss my flight on whatever day I finally get out of here. Yeah. Or, or are you just going to say, you know what? Fuck it. We're here. And maybe it would have been something, because for me, the thing that I, always gets me at Burning Man is like, there's a certain claustrophobia that starts to set in towards the end of the week mm -hmm. where you're like, can I leave whenever I want? You know, if I have a flight booked out, 
that's when I can leave. Yeah. Or if I don't have a friend that's leaving, that's when I can leave. And it starts to feel a little bit like I'm not in control of my destiny. And mm. this would be that on a hundred. Mm. And granted, there are some people who walked out, right? But they did? Yeah. yeah, Chris Rock walked out. Diplo walked out. I didn't know you could walk out. Where the fuck do you go? You walk to the town. It's five miles. Yeah. Really? Bro, last, last year, there was a crazy... This isn't the only year there's been inclement weather. Last year, there was a crazy sandstorm where you couldn't see six inches in front of you. Damn. So it's like we were driving out at one mile per hour in the sandstorm, could not see six inches in front of us. So you're basically bumper to bumper with the car in front of you, and they're bumper to bumper with the car in front of you, and you're just looking at that faint tail light that they mm -hmm. have for hours. So they walked five miles in the rain? Uh, I think it wasn't raining when they walked, but it was already muddy and wet. And they just did that to go stay in a hotel? To get out of the, the basically what's called the playa, to get out of that like, uh, oh. because what you're on is a dried up uh, vagina. lake. Yeah. Vagina. Okay. There's yeah. definitely dried up vagina <laughs> okay. there. But you're on a dried up lake. That's where, what the playa is. So naturally. Oh, it feels. Uh, for millions of years, this shit was underwater. Uh, and now it looks all flat. Yeah, I'd have tried to get the fuck out of there too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you get the fuck out yeah. of there. Yeah. Because you don't know how deep the fucking lake's going to go. Yeah, and you, you know don't know saying? how long you're going to be stuck there. Exactly. Because they're telling everybody, yo, conserve your food, conserve your water. And now you're like, for how long? Yeah. yeah. I wonder how long Chris Rock was there for. I wonder if that's his first time. Nah, he's been there before. He's been there before? But uh, how was the Hamptons, though? I saw that you said that you love Airbnbs now. Bro, the reason I love it is because, okay, do you know when you're going to Anguilla? Yep. And you travel with everybody? Absolutely. And everybody, I imagine at this point, are you all staying in one sort of- That's right, because I always run a house. Yeah. The, I love traveling with my wife when we stay at these hotels and it's awesome because we're together at the hotel. That's right. And I didn't really understand, and I always looked at Airbnb as like a, a secondary option to a hotel and I'm like, ooh, could I get something nicer for cheaper? I didn't realize fully until this weekend when we had you know seven of us out there that, it, that it's family time. That's right. And you're creating family time That's right. away from home. Mm. You can't even have family time with your family if you're at the hotel. And all the little moments that's happening in between dinner or whatever activity are popping up. And I'm like, oh, that is the brand. That's right. Like if I'm Airbnb, I'm leaning all the way in to that yeah. nonstop. That's the whole point of written luxury homes and villas yeah. when you away. Family it's like, time, man. It's when you wake up in the morning and, and y'all have breakfast, breakfast together. Yeah, 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 yeah you yeah, have yeah. breakfast together, figuring out what y'all want to go do for the day. Yeah. And then, you know, we old, so we don't go out at night. So yeah. once we done with the day and it's eight o'clock, nine o'clock, now we watching comedy specials yeah. and movies. And all and together, like that. Not all everybody together. in their own absolutely. little room. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. It's the best. Yeah. It's the fucking best, man. Did you go away? Nah, I stayed home for the weekend. Bro, we need to do a little Hamptons uh, week. I'm with it. But the, the, because here's the thing I realized, and I was telling, talking to guys this on, on Flagrant, old money, like rich people, like when I mean rich, I mean like wealthy old money people, they have been rich for so long that they've created an art out of spending their money. Yeah. And I think that's why they kind of look down to new money people sometimes, they see like a guy with an orange car in Miami and they're being snobby about it. But I think there's a little part of it that's like, ugh, you're doing the thing that everybody does when they get money. They're just trying to scream as loud as they can, hey, I have money, which is natural. That's what we all did when we got some money. Yeah, We're like, yeah, yeah, I yeah. need to scream as loud as I can, I have money, right? I, 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 it's almost a part, they look at you too like, who told y'all? <laughs> who told y'all? <laughs> or, 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 or they're going, <laughs> nobody told y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, nobody told y'all yeah, you're not yeah, supposed yeah. to buy the orange yeah, car. Yeah, yeah. So, so these old money motherfuckers, and don't get me wrong, some of them are like weird, they're snobby, sometimes they're rude, their kids are all a little fucking weird because they never socialize normally. Mm -hmm. Everybody's all kissing their ass or serving them their whole lives. I get that. That's some of them, but they've curated fantastic places to live. Oh, yeah. And they've curated amazing ways to enjoy their time. And and the Hamptons is just an example, like a world-class place to enjoy your time where you can also live a very full life. It's not just, hey, here's a beautiful place on the beach and there's nothing else to do, which is where I went every summer Fire Island. It's a beautiful place on the beach, but there's nothing else to do. Here, you're 
playing, you playing sports, you wanna go to the movies, you wanna go to a fine dining, you wanna go to a chill lobster check, you wanna take a boat down the bay. The thing is so diverse, and that's what these fucking people with tons of money do. Yeah. They gotta fill their, they're not working. No. You gotta fill your time with something else. No. You're not going to work 60 hours a week like us. Absolutely right. So, I, it's it's one of these things where I go, my knee-jerk reaction with, with these people is always be like, oh, that shit is corny. Oh, that shit is snobby. That's what you always say when you can't afford to be with Ed. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And I got to stop doing that. Yeah. We always say that when we can't be where these people they, are. Oh, yeah, they That's why yeah. I always say you really don't know what you'll do until you can actually do it. You know what I mean? The reason I know I don't give a fuck about... 95% of the stuff people care about is because oh, I can do yeah. I, I can do it and don't want to. Mm. Or, 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 yeah, to your point, I've done it and be like, eh, this ain't really my thing. That's you know like, what I mean? uh, like when you can start affording expensive clothing and shit, you realize Clothes, how, cars, how much like, you don't want it. Not for what? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I was you, only, I only desired that because I couldn't have it. Mm -hmm. And now that I can have it, it's like, and because some people want folks to know that they have wealth. And that's the insecurity. It's that's like when all you, when insecurity. You, when you don't have a lot, you can't wait to share it. And I think everybody should go through that experience. When you first get some money, you should throw it around a little bit, right? Because you spent so much time without it. Throw it around a little bit. Have some fun and learn on your own that that might not be the most fruitful way to spend the money. And then when you do experience that thing, whatever it is, if it's vacations, if it's fucking experiences, maybe you're really into cars and you wanna like build old cars or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But having that kind of passion tied into it, it was fucking great, man. I've never been like that, man. I've only ever cared about experiences. Amen. And I want everybody to have yes. a good time. Yes. So that's why like, I have no problem spending money on experiences. You know what I mean? Even we talk about these written, these houses, and these exotic places. I'll spend money on that because, it's worth it. hey, this person could buy a plane ticket. That person could buy a plane ticket. Fly in. Let's, you Bro. know what I mean? We kick it for a week like or whatever. Like I have no problem doing that. All that other shit, buying Bentleys and fucking Rolls Royce spirits. What is it, phantoms and ghosts and all the whatever the fuck else? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I'm not with it. I mean, like, that's the thing. You're going to rent a house and you guys are going to have a joke that happens that you're going to laugh at for 10 Forever. years. Forever. 10 years. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Forever. That's like, what you hope yeah. for. Shit happened this weekend that we will laugh at for 10 years. See what I'm saying? You can't put a price on that. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You know? But you can put a price on a Bentley. Yes, you can. You can put a price on a phantom yes, or a ghost. Yeah. You know what I mean? And guess what? That shit don't mean nothing. You, you don't have no real memories with none of that shit. Yes. And people have to learn that on their own. You know what I mean? Like, it's like one of those things we've already talked about on a pod where it's like, you, you don't take anybody's advice when you're not in that position. That's right. Like, That's right. how many times have people told us certain things that we weren't gonna care about? And we were like, nah, that's important to me. And then we got to that place in life and we're like, oh, holy shit, they were right. They were absolutely right. Yeah. Let's talk about poor shit, man. Okay, let's talk about poor shit. Um, <laughs> what's the poor shit you saw this week? What these poor oh, assholes doing? Bro, uh, <laughs> honestly, I saw I saw somebody renting a house. <laughs> What's wrong with that? No, no, just yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it was us! It was us! Uh, salute, salute, so, uh, salute. What is the poorest shit? What is the poorest shit? I mean, it's a lot of stuff happening. I saw Nikki Haley say that uh, they need to put terms on these motherfucking old ass politicians because Mitch McConnell had another stroke. The cartoon turtle. <laughs> the cartoon turtle. Doesn't, he, doesn't he look like the tortoise in the hair? He does he? look like the fucking tortoise. But yeah, he's, uh, yeah, they're turning him off. H have you heard of that, like, uh, uh, what is that program they said by the CIA? It's called MK Ultra. Yeah, they, absolutely. You heard about yeah, that, right? Yeah, yeah, you heard about yeah. that? Yeah. Okay, so they're saying that like this MK Ultra, these things, which were true, they were these experiments, I, th uh, I think, using like uh, acid and other psychedelics mm -hmm. and seeing if they could yeah. use uh, those psychedelics to essentially like control, control people's people. behavior. Yeah. I think they did a lot of those experiments on the guy who did those uh, murders out in California. What was his name? Um, uh, he had like a swastika on his forehead. Who, recently? Manson. Charles Manson. Allegedly, yeah. But I think he was involved. I think like his dad was some, on some CIA shit. Anyway, like, doesn't matter. My point is, this looks like, I know this is just aging and it's funny to be conspiratorial about it, but like, 
This looks like some NK Ultra shit. It yes. looks like they're like, okay, let's turn this motherfucker off. We don't need him anymore. Yes. And this is, right? it's, like, it's, no, you're absolutely right. And this is why we also got to turn wokeness the fuck off because as soon as you say something about a Mitch McConnell or President Biden or Dianne Feinstein, people say, stop being ages. It has nothing to do with ages. No, they got okay? responsibility. Why can we be ages if the bus driver doing that? Word up. The bus driver. All of a sudden, freezing. we ages. Word up. Right? Like, Word up. it really just Word shows, up. you know what this shows? It shows that we don't think politicians do anything that's what it really comes down to because if we thought if he was a pilot we would be like nah that's get right. him out of here that's right mm. if that's he right. had any job that we deemed you need to be absolutely in control of all your faculties to do we would get him out of there but the fact that the american public thinks that politicians do absolutely jack that's shit right. we let these corpses continue to do their fucking job this isn't ages this is cognitive decline Decline. Period. It ain't there. <laughs> it ain't there. There's no cognition. There's no post. Bro. Just, there's no post He at looks all. like me looking at the latest Salma Hayek pic. I feel so sorry for him, man. <laughs> Mitch McConnell wants to retire. Fuck it. What's wrong with Salma Hayek? No, no, Dang, no, nothing wrong. Oh, I'm about to say. I, I, no. Shit. Bro, she got the horchata factory. Can't you see I'm froze? <laughs> like, 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 like Mitch McConnell, President Biden, oh, Diane man. Feinstein, they probably all really want to quit. Mm. But their parties won't let them. Why won't they let them? Because they're like, we have nobody else right now. Y'all are in the positions of power. Stay here until you can't anymore. Bro, Poor Mitch, man. They Is that really learn? how you want to spend your last days, yo? Oh, just clutching the podium? Come like, on, where man. the fuck am I? Come on, man. And why am I here? <laughs> yo. Nah, what, get him out what of here. What, what if he's uh, got a new Viagra prescription? Oh, you think and, that they and, stick him with a vi? And those freezes happen when he gets a little woody. He's out there talking, you know what I'm saying? All the blood it's, comes from his brain and exactly. rushes to his dick and he has no fucking clue what's going on. There's some little hot thing there that he keeps seeing and he's like, oh mm. shit, it's happening right now. Mm. Either that or he's actually soiling his pants. He might be shitting his pants. He's got to be fucking shitting shit his, his pants. pants. He might be that right there is the like, that's the shit face, bro. That's the like, oh shit. Yep. The oops, I did it again. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what that is, yo. This shit is fucking crazy. Nah, you gotta man. retire him, bro. He don't deserve this. Retire man. him, man. Let Fuck, him go. Retire do something. him, retire Diane Feinstein. Diane Feinstein don't even know if she be fucking voting. People gotta vote for her. Where is she? She's in the Senate. California. But what does yeah. she look like? Is she in the wheelchair? Pull up. She is in the wheelchair. Pull up wow. Diane Feinstein, um, uh, Alex. Jesus Christ, man. P poor Mitch. Now, God damn. Yeah, this ain't good, bro. Dude, come on, bro. Oh, goodness come gracious. Come on, man. She looks like oh, she's supposed to be in a museum shit. now. Holy <laughs> like, shit. You know, she, should, she should be in a museum, bro. Go. Good God. Like, come on, man. Bro. That ain't right, yo. No, She's bro. 90. No, 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 no. Why y'all got this woman spending her last days oh, yeah. like this, man? Go to that one in the blue. That's crazy. Come right on, there. man. She's in a wheelchair, man. Let it go. Let it go. Let her go live her life, man. She was cute as a little one. What year was that, 1911? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't no color pictures back then. Exactly. Yo, get out of here. Real, man. <laughs> Jesus nah, Christ, they gotta get man. Away. I mean, so what do we do? Do we do an age limit or is there a cognitive test? What Nikki Haley said is absolutely right. Nikki said either term limits or a cognitive test after a certain age. What I will say is right now, the Senate is the most privileged nursing home in the country. I mean, you know, Mitch McConnell has done some great things and he deserves credit, but you have to know when to leave. That is why I'm strongly in support of term limits in this country. I think that we do need mental competency tests for anyone over the age of 75. I, don't, I wouldn't care if they did them over the age of 50, but these are people making decisions on our national security. They're making decisions on our economy, on the border. We need to know they're at the the top of their game. You, you can't say that right now looking at Congress. I mean, term limits, term limits make sense. I think that that's most representative of democracy uh, or, or um, cognitive test. The tricky thing about cognitive test, what, what could go wrong with that? Let's think. What could, depends. Depends what you ask asking that? people. Why, but you, like, why it, you say that, Break Chris? that down, yeah, like. Well, because cognitive test is still subjective at the end of the day, right? Uh -huh. So, you could say it's based on scientific feedback, but obviously people can manipulate those results or they can manipulate what the standard that you're being tested for is. And That's it, becomes, what I'm it becomes a tool to take people out. It's, it's just, very, it's, yeah. exactly. So it's very easy to 
finagle that test, and then you have the right is going to try to make the left look dumb. Oh, look, he's not cognitively fit to run. We got to get him out of here. He's not but what do they call it, though? I mean, like, like what do you do Let's with a cognitive term limits. test? Are there no term limits for the House of Representatives? No, I think it's only president is the only term limit. Senate as well? Yeah. No term limits. No, no term limits, I don't think. Oh, you got to so, so if there's no cognitive test, right, like, there's got to be certain things that we, the people, can say we don't want them no more. Like, when Joe Biden goes to shake hands with a ghost. You know what I mean? When Joe Biden goes to shake somebody's hand and there's clearly nobody there, but he's still yeah. standing there with his hand out. Yeah. And if somebody has to turn him and direct him to get out, it's like, come on now. Yeah. Can we start asking some questions then? Yeah. Mitch McConnell freezes twice, bomb. You know what I mean? Can't you see I'm froze? He does that twice, <laughs> you know, in front of people. Can't we start asking some questions? I got to see what's on the other side of the camera, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, mad, what if there's mad bitches sticking their fists in their vaginas, and it's just like he just up there, like, what the fuck is going on here? Nah, man. What y'all, what, what Mitch keeps seeing is that dude from the Crossroads video with that goddamn trench coat on <laughs> and then black shades and that black hat. Mitch like, no. Every time Mitch see him, he's like, is this it? And the guy, the guy probably fucking with him. See he probably showed up the first time, <laughs> and he was like, nah, I don't do it. I'm not gonna do it here. <laughs> so you popped up again on him? Like, nah, I'm not going to do it here, man. So that's, what Yo. <laughs> that's what the fuck it is. That's crazy. <laughs> what else we got, Taylor oh, gang? Sure. We just warming up. We just warming up here on Brilliant Idiots. You know well, what I'm saying? You had a good weekend? I did have a good weekend, man. I don't do nothing on weekends, which you is my favorite chill? thing to do. But you guys didn't want to go away or go back nah, home? Nah, because school started this week. Uh. Kids got to go back to school. They actually went back uh, Tuesday. My oldest went back Tuesday. The other, my, my two uh, youngest in school, they go back Wednesday. So it's like, eh. Yeah. And we're doing a lot of traveling for the holidays. I mean, that's far. Oh, Beyonce. Yes. Beyonce. The queen. She became the high, what is it, Taylor? Because Taylor couldn't wait to say this. Taylor gave me, Taylor gave me two talking points to come in here with. <laughs> One, one we'll get to, that's about her, which is so crazy, because Taylor's like really the selfish person. Beyonce's Renaissance World Tour has become the highest grossing tour by a woman artist in history. Mm. The queen. Mm. Okay. There's a caveat, I know. though. I know. Oh, wait, what? There's a caveat. Oh, what is it? Taylor hasn't submitted her numbers yet. Oh, <laughs> how sweet of Taylor to give Beyonce that little gift. There you go, girl. Go run the world. Go run the world real quick. Beyonce has the record first. That's good. And congratulations to her. And she's an absolutely amazing uh, yeah. live performer. But um, and singer and musician and, and talent. And uh, she deserves better with her sound system. Oh my God, man! That's gotta be the fucking. That's gotta be the most fucked up shit in the world when you got a tour of that magnitude, I know. making all this money, I and know. you come out and your fucking microphone fucks up. I, like Kendrick yes. Lamar came out and couldn't, like you couldn't even hear him. You could That's just you know. disrespectful. And you wonder why 50 Cent is throwing microphones at people. Yo, what? Can we, I want to understand that. Mm -hmm. Also, where was that throw with, when he was at uh, the pitcher's mound? Yeah. That, 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 that probably was the same exact throw. He no. probably was throwing it at the sound man and ended up hitting, <laughs> hitting the girl. That shit probably curved right and Bro, then hit the young hilarious. lady. He goes from throwing the mic and everybody on the left of the fucking stadium exactly. is like, uh oh, uh oh. Exactly. <laughs> the sound man just sitting there like, oh, please. Yeah. You know what I mean? That shit ain't getting nowhere oh, near me. Yeah. You know? That poor girl though, man, but she gonna get a big settlement. And she's a radio host? She's a radio host. I can't remember the young lady's name. What's her name? Wow. Look up there. She works at Power 106. I don't know her name. But yeah, if I'm 50, I'm already settling with her. And what do you give her? <sighs> Probably 100. 100 what? 1,000. 
What? Bro, she's going to get more, more than 100000 You see the But that's what I'm saying. I'm trying, to, set, I'm yeah, trying to settle for her. I'm trying to settle for 100000 Yeah, but she's not going to take that. I don't want her to get that. to that point. She's going to need She's going to need a new head. That's what I'm How saying. How much is a new head? <laughs> she's going to need a whole new head. <laughs> how much is a new head? I, I don't even want nobody to get in her ear and get to that oh, point to let her, her know ear. how much she probably oh. could get. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah. He should have settled while she was still dizzy. He should have jumped right <laughs> off that stage, handed her a stack, and was like, yo, we good, Yo, sign this. There we go. <laughs> nah, cause she's sober now. That's about a hundred, though. Yo, first of all, you think that's more than a hundred, bro? Yes. Now he got to give her something. How much you think more than a hundred? Because she could claim it's long term cognitive. Yeah, cognitive they're gonna difference. milk this yeah. to the end. Damn. So that's I mean, a and she probably situation. dove up and headbutted it on some soccer shit. <laughs> Wouldn't you? I'm just you saying. You just randomly throw a mic. And you, yeah, I'm you jump in. Right Go. Hell yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it busted her head open. Which she probably doesn't want. Yo, leave 50 alone, sweetheart, please. It's wrong what happens, but leave 50 alone, man. We need 50. I mean, okay? 50 gonna be fine. She gonna get her money, though. Yeah. She, got, she gonna get her money. I mean, probably she should sue the, the sound system. Because that would never happen if the sound yeah. didn't fall apart. That's really the sound system's fault. Yeah, yeah. You mad at the wrong people 100%. here. 100%. You mad at the wrong people here. I would take that out on the sound people. You mad at the wrong people here. Okay, that's one thing Taylor wanted us to address. What? Just say it. No, say it. No. Oh, no. So Taylor going to tell me. Oh, no. On the way here. Uh-oh. And Taylor, Taylor, don't act like you didn't want me to talk about it because you wouldn't have said it to me. So she goes to me. Oh, one of my little, one of my little, little cut friends, you know, is having a baby. And I'm like, congratulations to her. You know what I'm saying? Taylor's mad because one of her little cut friends is having a baby. What's a cut friend? It's something you, you know, get with on the side. A little sneaky link. You know what I mean? Why are you mad at her for having a why are you mad at her for having a baby? Hold on. I'm so I'm confused. confused. I got it now. Curse you just what's the what's A girl, the a guy that she fucks on the side. No, a no, girl. God. A girl Stop. Not let him think I'm a lesbian. A I'm not. A girl she fucks with on the side oh is having a baby. God. And, and I, Taylor, I don't know what's going on. Taylor oh, went full shit. Taylor going full stud. You know, what are you Taylor, Taylor going about? full stud when she's upset yeah. now that this woman went and got some dick and is having a baby. I need to understand. Yo, Gotti's coming up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hold on. I need to understand. Taylor, can you this explain is, this real quick? Yeah. A guy it's or a girl? I don't get this. It's a guy. So a guy? She, she's lying. Like she's I'm not, a lesbian. She's, 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 not, she's so lying. So a guy you fuck she's with lying. on the side. I don't want to pull you out the closet, Taylor. Yes or no? Guy? I thought it was the thing. I thought we all knew that you liked girls, too. I didn't know. I'm sorry. I don't. Stop. Can you really? please tell me? You see how she said it? She's like, I don't, I don't stop. 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 <laughs> Giggling, covering her face stop. and shit. Because you're annoying as hell. <laughs> a sneaky link is having a child. and I've What's had a sneaky link? Can you just tell me? Someone that you're not really supposed to be fucking with, but you're fucking but with. But somebody that used to beat up your lower Arby's <laughs> is going to have a baby with no, another. They used to rub Arby's. They used to rub Arby's together, okay? They used to put their meats together, <laughs> okay? That's, That's what disgusting. they used to do. <laughs> so, <laughs> what? Like I'm waiting to hear more. But no, it's like, I mean, more. it was a girl that used to do the car wash thing when the... the <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what it was. I don't know why are you so ashamed of this. Okay, so a guy that you were fucking while he had a baby a mama girl. or a girl. Guy or girl? It's a guy. And so while he had another girl, you were fucking him? No, no, nah, So nah. he just got some random it's pregnant? Like, I'm just saying it's like one of those things where it's like... I Could already, have been you. It's not like I really wanted to have a big with him, but it's like now... Could have been you, though. But I was telling Sean, man, I was like, it's like he already wasn't like really... He was toxic. Yeah. But he had shit going on for him. So it was like a potential there. But then... Did you... Now I, I mean, really, this is... I got nothing to do with him. Now. Nothing at all. But did you let him... Did you let him uh, go raw? No. I mean, a couple. How do strokes. girls go raw? Isn't it always raw? <laughs> I hate y'all. Is it <laughs> raw? Not, they don't have clit condoms, do they? Yes, they do. They have women condoms. Really? Yeah. Not clit condoms. Dent not clit, but yeah, dance. it's like dent, what's it called? It's yeah. a dental dam. Female yeah. condom. So you got put in your mouth? <laughs> yeah. But that shit don't work, bro. You just stuff it in there, like when your sock comes off your heel. You used it yeah. before? Say what? You used one before? No. 
Oh, well. Why do they call it dental cam? I didn't want to. <laughs> and then what happens? You, yeah, you used yeah. one before? It was yeah. retarded. It's like, Why? Uh, it's what like made you want to use one? saran wrap that you just put it on top. And oh, just, and then lick on top of yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what the, the fuck? fuck? Yeah. That's nasty. This was high school, bro. I was trying to be safe. Wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> so instead of... You call that packing a lunch? A regular, <laughs> <laughs> instead of a regular condom, you just you you went to the woman? tuna? Yeah, like if you go in that side. Oh, you put a condom while going... Oh. Yeah. Let me see. Shut up. Let me see. That's disrespectful. I wish see, a nigga would. You've been out having unprotected lesbian no, sex all this time, that is disrespectful, Taylor. man. Is it always green? But that's in her mouth, though. I thought it was going on her vagina. So you're wishing you let this guy hit raw? No, I'm not. A little bit. No, what I'm else not. you got, Taylor? What? <laughs> was he a white guy? Absolutely. Don't play with me. What? You've never heard of a white guy? I did meet a white guy, though, over the weekend, though. That you liked? He was yeah, cute. of course. He was a cool white guy, though. Yeah, like, exactly. He used, We're all cool. He used Philly slang. Oh. Like, what do you say? Like, little John? Yeah, he said John, drawling, all that. I was like, oh. He said drawling? Drawling. Man, it, don't yo. take, it really don't take much for y'all, yo. Y'all be, hey, yo. Hey, all a white dude got to do is dance a little bit. You know what I'm saying? He don't even got to be like a real good dancer. Just, y'all too. Just, just hit the snake one time. It's like, oh, he got rhythm, girl. You know what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck? One little TikTok challenge, he ready to marry this man. Bro, you Dr. know Dr. Umar would funny. be so disappointed. Yeah. That's all it takes is a John and a drawling. Yo, we do the same Caucasian. thing for each other, though. <laughs> Like, like, when a white dude, in order for a white dude to be cool, all we gotta do is beatbox or some shit, and then we're the coolest white dude. And, you know what I mean? And in order, for a, in order for a black dude to be smart, it's like, oh, you're so articulate. Oh my God, you're so. Right? Why, do we, why do we have low expectations for each other? It's so crazy, why do we do man. That? I was, you know what's so funny? I was having this conversation about white men can't jump, the original one earlier this week, right? Mm-hmm. And I was saying how white men can't jump. Cause, oh, this is the conversation we were having. I actually wish Van was here because it was me and Van. And we were saying, could you ever do a movie called Black Men Can't Read? Oh. Right? Or I Black Men you were Don't Read. I about Van starting in a movie called Black Men Can't Jump anymore. No. <laughs> Fat Men Can't Jump. <laughs> Fat Men Can't Jump. <laughs> Fat Men Can't Jump. But we were having a conversation. I love you, Van. Uh, uh, if, the, if the title of the movie was Black Men Don't Read. Or Black Men Can't Read. Or Can't Read, yeah. would you do that? And I'm like, that could absolutely work if you did it as the same premise of white men can't jump. Because the premise of white men can't jump was the fact that that whole movie was about stereotypes. Yes. And how you shouldn't feed into stereotypes. Like, even yeah. if you look at the movie, right? Billy Hoyt. Yep. Right? His whole demeanor. The reason that they were able to scam people for the first part of the movie is because nobody thought this dude nobody could play basketball. Yeah. Because he was a white guy. Yeah. But then even, even if you look at the, the way the, the roles are in the movie, uh, Wesley Snipes' character, he's the hardworking guy who's a family man who takes care of his, his kids. But Billy Hoyt is the fucker. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Billy Hoyt's not married. You know, he don't really have a steady job, steady income. Yep. They hustling people. So it's like the whole movie is about defying stereotypes. So if you did a movie called Black Men Don't Read or Black Men Can't, Can't read, read, if it's centered around the defying of that stereotype, you could absolutely do that movie. Yeah. Y'all don't think the title would fly in 2023? No, because I don't think there's anybody that believes the black man can't read. Of, 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 of course. But at that time, we shouldn't have thought white men couldn't jump either. But we knew white people could play ball. They just couldn't jump. And to be fair, he couldn't jump the whole movie. He, he only dunked, dunked at, the end. at the end. It took him the whole movie to dunk. He was saving dunk. the best for last. Fair enough, but he, he nobody can't ever jump. threw him an alley because people prejudice as fuck. That's facts, bro. It really was about you know the alley. What I'm it really up. was about the and alley. He, he could have threw him an alley early in the movie. He didn't think he could. He was like, "Oh shit!" No, nah, that's crazy how they never throw white boys the alley. That's my. That's all it is. Yeah. That's all it is. I so think, then, what happens in the last scene of the, of the Black Man Can't Read movie? Well, the whole movie is, would literally be just about, the last scene. What? No. But what, give me the last scene. Like, <laughs> like how, did, how does he save the day? He kills reading. a spelling bee. How does he like, save he, the he, like, he kills a spelling bee. No, but that's spelling. We need him no. to read something. But like I don't know how the end would go, but throughout the whole save movie. Save the day by reading, Charlotte. He, what do you have to he, read? He'd be like this super scholar. You know what I mean? Oh, Throughout the whole shit. movie. And then at the end, he just does something that nobody can figure out. Whoa. But throughout the movie, he's getting those things. Like how you said earlier, people are like, oh, you're so articulate. Uh, oh, yeah. you speak so well. Yeah, this and yeah, that. Like, yeah. So people are shocked. shocked that he could do normal That's shit. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. The That's bigot, right. They call that the bigotry of low expectations. The, salute to Ebony K. Williams. I suspect that some of y'all are the same men 
that were bringing home C's and D's on your report cards, only to then be coddled by parents that said, well, that's okay, as long as you're doing your best. Well, listen, I love and believe in the excellence of black men. So no, my dear, C's and D's or any other form of mediocrity is not okay. No, I will not create a soft place for you or anybody that I love to fall comfortably into the bigotry of low expectations. <laughs> Damn. Damn. She you dropped would, it hard, too. Come on, like, man. Bigotry. The bigotry of <laughs> low <laughs> expectations, <laughs> man. Shit. Yo, I don't even know how we got here, yo. I just wanted to talk about <laughs> I just wanted to say the bigotry of low expectations. Bigotry of low expectations is <laughs> fire, it. bro. That's, That's fire, it. though. That's what Taylor had. She had the bigotry of low expectations for that dude. You did. You know what I'm you saying? You did. And now that you dude, did. then that dude went and got him a whole family. <laughs> Okay. I'm encouraging him to stay with her. Do not break up black families, yo. Exactly. I don't. Do not break up black I'm families. I'm not a homemaker so. at all. Um, Diddy <laughs> turned down nine <laughs> figures, gives bad boy artists publishing rights back. Uh, Diddy chose to do the right thing over money. He turned down a fortune to make sure his former artists had control of their own music. TMZ has learned. Sources with direct knowledge say this media mogul and bad boy label Honcho is making an unprecedented move in the music industry right now, namely handing over the publishing rights to several of his former bad boy acts. Word of this started to percolate just a few days ago when Cameron took to social media to announce that Mace had finally sealed the deal with Puff and secured his catalog for himself. Several others have recently signed deals with Diddy to do the exact same thing, including some huge names. Sources say Diddy has been approached for Bad Boy's entire portfolio and was offered a king's ransom for it all, but he turned that down and chose to go down this road instead. What is wrong with me that the second I see an incredibly successful entrepreneur businessman doing something that is altruistic, kind, and beautiful, that I'm immediately skeptical. Because that's the world we live in. Okay, so it's not just I'm an asshole. No, man. But the second I read this, I was like, ah, what's the catch? What's that's the going world we on? live in. Everything is about skepticism. What would social media be without skepticism? Nobody could be doing the right thing to okay. do the right thing. So take me through why this may not be as altruistic as it appears. What would be the criticism on this? No, I agree with you totally with the skepticism. <laughs> no, no. I'm, so I'm what like, do you mean? so like, walk me through. Why would he be? Why is this a good deed? No, no, no. Walk me through why it may not be a good deed. Oh well, I think that Diddy was probably offered a lot of money for the Bad Boy catalog because they've been offering a lot of people a lot of money for their catalogs, and I think Diddy knows if he was to personally take all of this money, it would be super backlash. You know what I'm saying? Because he tech, people think he owes so many people, you know, so much money. And because the reputation that Diddy has always had of being a person that, you know, takes people's publishing and all of that, right? So if he was to get this big payday, immediate backlash on social media. Why? Because motherfuckers is haters. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I have a hard time believing, though, that he isn't in some way still connected to the rights to the music. For example... Let's say he gave Mace the rights to his music. Yeah. He no longer owns the publishing. Is he still connected as a producer? Of course. Okay, yeah, so producer, if, writer, everything else. But also, too, one more point. Did he got an album coming up? I got to clear the runway for my album. I can't have all this negativity and toxicity around me uh, when my album comes out. I take this money for this motherfucking deal. You know what I'm saying? Now everybody's talking about this instead of, instead of my motherfucking music. You well, know what I mean? He could just... Not sell it at all. He yeah. could just hold on. Why didn't he just keep it? Keep what? Keep all the albums. Keep the keep publishing the that he owned. Because he still got an album coming out. You know what I'm saying? No, but I mean so, like, so yeah, so even if even if he didn't sell it, I just think it's a good way to degenerate good positive positive feet talk around his project dropping. Him and his album. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Diddy. Yeah, yeah. Love. You know, I'm all about love and blah. Like he's doing like it's good. It's good. So, so it let's breeds say, goodwill. For example. He gives back the publishing or he gives back the rights to the artists. Yeah. He's still an executive producer on the projects. Maybe. I don't know if he is or isn't. Is it possible that when May sells his publishing, if he does, that Diddy still gets money from it? So he's not completely removed from the profitability of the music. 
It's just not in his hands to sell it to somebody else. I'm not sure how that works because I don't know. How, I don't. I don't know. I really don't understand how publishing works because Mace wrote a lot of records for Diddy as well. You know what I'm saying? So there's records Mace probably wrote on that he didn't get publishing for, but maybe Diddy gave him a flat fee. I'm sure a lot of the songs that Diddy and Mace have together, of course, Diddy's gonna always probably profit off a lot of those records because it was his label. Yeah. He's the executive producer. Shit happens. You know what I mean? Like he's gonna he's gonna always find a way to I'm sure make money off a what lot of these records. Amazing commodity music is. Is there any commodity more valuable? You create a song. Sex. Well, here's the thing: sex has diminishing returns. Talk to me. Music. You create a song. People like the song. They play it even more. Then they maybe don't play it for a little bit. And then years later, they come back to it and they play it. And they're like, oh my God, I love this song. And I realize how much I love it. Some years go by, maybe they don't play it. 20 years go by, all of a sudden the song can have a resurgence and now they're playing it all the fucking time. This one thing that you created is going to pay you for your whole fucking lifetime. That's, and that's vaginas. one song. That vagina got diminishing returns. Different vaginas play the same tune. But it's different vaginas. But you never know. <laughs> Give me one vagina. It's still hitting 40 years later. <laughs> Ain't one vagina still hitting 40 years later. Well, that's why you just give new ones. That's why music is so brilliant. That one single, Thriller, is going to slap for a century. Yeah, Ain't yeah, no 100-year-old yeah, yeah. pussy on this planet still slapping. Okay, well, explain Taylor Swift then. Greatest of all time. Taylor Swift took... Oh, no. <laughs> what I'm saying is... Taylor Are we talking Swift about took her that, music? Or? She took that first vagina from the first album. Yes. Redid it, refurbished it. You know what I'm saying? But she had and to refurbish. put it back out there. She had to refurbish. It had to be different. Each song is different. So that's why you have vaginal rejuvenation. You need to do what a surgery to a song. Sorry, to a vagina to make it good. Forty years later, you don't need to do a surgery to thrill it. Thrill is still gonna hit. You gotta fucking. You gotta master it a different way though. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta fact, uh, make it to where it, it, it hits in these new sound systems and shit. What do they call it? What do they call it when they the remastering? Remix remastering, it? Yeah. yeah. Not even. What bro. about the Kim K sex tape? I feel like that gets a resurgence every once in a while. Yo, but it ain't hitting, hitting, bro. It's not at the point where it's like, oh, this is gonna shut down the party. Yeah, those old that's songs example, don't though, hit, bro. Are you kidding me? You know I why mean, that's a good example? Been She's been married four times. That's what I'm saying. She's been married four times. But she still got to work every time. Bro. Same vagina, different tune for different people. But she still got to work. She got to stay in shape. She got to get plastic surgery tune up. She is constantly, constantly Damn. working. This song you Damn. made once, yeah, and then yeah, you're yeah, eating yeah, forever yeah, on yeah. it. If you buy some gasoline, you use it in your car. It's done, never to be used again. Yeah. It is recyclable. I'm just saying music, bro. Oh, my yeah, God. There really might not be nothing like music, nothing. bro. I can't think of it. I mean, I guess, I guess, Movies. yeah, movies. But movies have diminishing return. You can't watch the same movie every single day over and over and over yes, again I can. in the way that you can music. Yes, I can. I'll watch Rocky. I'll watch Rocky 4. I'll watch Rocky 2. I'll watch the end game scene when the goddamn portal's open. That's a great when scene. That's what I'm saying. Yo, you know <laughs> like, something I'm like, on right like now? Those are like, ooh. I'm not going to lie. Those are adrenaline rushes, man. What I'm on right now is watching scenes from movies on YouTube. Oh, yeah. I love that. Oh, like yeah. an iconic scene from Maverick, an iconic scene from Rocky, an iconic scene from Friday Night Lights or some shit. Not Friday Night Lights. What's the movie called? Strong Side. Friday Night Lights. Brokeback Mountain? No, 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 no. It's not Friday Night Lights. It's Remember the Titans. Oh. Like in a, these iconic scenes on YouTube, and it just taps you into that emotion, that feeling that you have. That's all you want. And you just need two and a half minutes. I don't need the two hours. That's it. Like an end game, I know exactly where I like to start at end game. Where you go? When fucking Hulk puts on the glove yeah. and snaps his finger. When Hulk puts on the glove and snaps his finger and everybody comes back, but Thanos is already in, and so Thanos starts bombing on motherfucking uh, the facility that facility they're at, and then they go to war from that moment until the Iron portal's Man. open, and then Tony Stark, Tony Snark snaps, the two snaps, baby. Two when snap Hulk snaps, snap Tony snap. Stark snaps. Mm. Snap to snap. That's all I need from Endgame, yo. That snap to snap is all I need, and I'm good. Yeah, it's fantastic. That's all I need, man. Damn. Um, speaking of Kim, Kanye's band... I don't believe that. 
He's banned. You really believe he's banned? Yeah, he's just the owner of the boat company yeah. said, don't bring your fat ass on my boat no more. Come on, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's not like there haven't been naked people on the boats before. I don't buy that. The owner of the bit. boat company banned the couple from ever riding on the boats again after pictures went viral of the couple seemingly participating in sexual acts while riding through Venice, Italy. Here's my, my thing. I still don't understand why he did that. I don't think that he was doing anything sexual. Mm. I think that he just had his pants sagged, wasn't wearing underwear, so his butt was showing. He thought that his jacket would be covered. Yeah. Or he's really married. What do you mean? Because when you're really married, man, you got to get it when you can get it. So yeah. that's, that, 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 like, that's facts. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, but so so with these boats that you take in Venice, like you can get picked up at the airport and you yeah. essentially take this boat to your hotel. Where he's sitting on the boat, the whole boat where the seats are, where he's sitting, but he's sitting basically on this part. Look at this. This part of the seat. Yeah. So she's not on her knees. She's sitting on the actual seat. This is a very normal way to ride this boat. I mean, come on, come on, come show on, us. Look at, look, come on. He, that, that, he even got the head position. Yeah, like. If, you, if, if right now you got down on your knees and I put my hand behind your head like that and somebody took a picture of it, they gonna say Schultz was giving Charlamagne head. That look like head. a girl about to give head, yo. Bro, the, but the seat would be facing the other way. She so looked she, worried. She's like, here? She's reversed on the seat. And we just got off the plane? You got plane dick. You know what I'm realizing? Like you smell like we've been flying for hours. Are you sure? You know how Captain America needs his shield? Yeah. That's what a, a girl with fat tits is for Kanye. Kanye really can't get the buzz going unless he got an ambiguously looking white girl with fat tits. Mm. It, it is a specific thing. And racially ambiguously looking white girl with fat tits, he can get cooking, bro. Well, this is played she can out. make news. We've seen this a million times. If Kanye want to, uh, you know, really make news now, he got to pop out with a black woman. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When? Whenever. Like, pop out with a... And I'm talking about a... Show go, me when, go, it, when go, it really made news. I think he needs... Amber Rose was his best moment. Other, racially other than marrying him. ambiguous looking white girl with fat tits. We know that she's Cape Verdean. She knows that she is technically black. But if you see her in person, you she think she's black. white. Amber Rose? You think so? Yes. Nah. Yes. She had a wig on. Nah. She, she got blonde hair. She Amber don't, Rose no. don't look when white. She has a wig on... She I can see black. how you're like. She, yeah, she does. Oh, she, she, does. she like a she light skin. What black I'm girl. saying is racially ambiguous, but whitish. Like there is, like for example, this girl Beyonce says whatever her name is. She is racially ambiguous, kind of, but yeah, she's white. Kim Kardashian, racially ambiguous, kind of. I guess she's Middle Eastern, but she's kind of. All the more white. reason that if he goes and gives him a fly, beautiful sister, shut down the internet. But he's, I, I think he's, he's done it and it doesn't happen. I can't think, I've never seen him with one. Exactly. I, I thought Amber was, was the one. His but exactly. girlfriend, when he was coming up, he, she was black. Alexis. And, it, and nobody even knew who she was. But nobody, uh, knew, who Kanye, nobody reason, knew who Kanye was then either, though. For whatever reason, the, the, the public seems to enjoy when he is dating a specific archetype of girl. He didn't, they didn't care when she was dating Irina Shayk because the titties ain't big enough. He needs fat chest. <laughs> who was Irina Shayk? He needs Shake? fat chest. <laughs> uh, uh, Julia, whatever her name is, Fox. Oh, yeah. Right? They yeah. care about it. It needs to be fat tits. Now, he did date this absolutely beautiful black woman. Nobody cared. No one knew who he was. No, remember he was dating that beautiful black girl for a little bit. Who? Exactly. Who? Who? I, I really don't point. remember. When? Who? The when? Who? Uh, after Kim, yeah. All what was that? that? After Kim, right? He was dating a bunch if of different Kanye women. I think it was out with a sister Julia right Fox. now, man, yeah. it would do wonders yeah. for him, man. If Kanye popped out with a black woman right now, everybody would be like, oh, shoot, is Ye back? He knows what works, bro. But he's married, isn't he? Remember he dated the yeah, girl that kind of looked yeah. like Kim? Yeah. That was the girl. Yeah. And people ain't care that much. Because she looked like Kim. And he was still lusting over Kim on Twitter. You remember he wanted to fight Pete and all of this other stuff and mm. was making crazy music videos? Like, God bless Kanye, man. I'm not looking forward to hearing any music from Kanye. Are y'all? Yeah, I am. Really? Yeah. I don't he's believe you. He's a king you. to a god. I don't believe you. He still has that gift of making music. Oh, no. He's a, listen, he's one of the greatest so musicians, I'm, producers I'm always going to listen. I would rather like I would rather hear Kanye do what Hit Boy and Nas are doing. I want Kanye to get with like his favorite rapper or a dope young up-and-coming rapper and do what Nas and Hit Boy are doing with each other. Because see, Nas went and got with one of the young producers. Hit Boy clearly has been a Nas fan all his life. And he just, 
you know, has been feeding Nas the type of production that got Nas in his bag over and over. I want to see an older producer do that with a young artist. I actually wanted to see Havoc do something like that with J. Cole. But think about how dope it would be if Kanye and J. Cole did a project together. Or, you know, I don't know, Kanye, who's another Kanye and a IDK? I'm just throwing names out there, but just Kanye and like some dope ass young rapper that we all respect, but we know just needs like that extra push production wise. Because that's all Nas ever needed. Yeah. Was an extra push production wise. I think it would be mm. dope to see Kanye do that with like somebody new and up and coming. I would love another Watch the Throne. Jay Z not touching that. That would that would be. I don't want. I don't want that. Jay Z not touching. I don't want another. I don't want another Watch the Throne. Yeah. I want to see Kanye collaborate with somebody where it's just him and an artist, but it ain't Jay Z. I would. I would like. I would actually like it to be somebody younger. I for some reason I feel like Ye and J Cole. Collaborating the way Nas and Hit Boy would be, did would be special. Now, can Kanye do it for someone else? Yeah. Is he willing to submit himself to somebody else? Yeah, he's always done it for other people. Well, until he was able to do it for himself, and then he was like, I don't need to do this. But for even other then, he was, he, I mean, think about how he bought Pusha T. Pusha T wasn't a solo artist until he got with Kanye, did the Big Sean's, the Kid Cuddy's common. You know what I mean? Like, like he re energized a lot of people. Like, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, Kanye could do it. You want to pay some bills? Let's pay some bills. Let's pay some bills, man. Let's pay some bills. Then we can come back and talk about monkeys. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> policy genius. <laughs> policy genius. Uh, salute to policy genius. Uh, man, if you have a family like I do, you know how much your loved ones depend on you. In a worst case scenario, you wouldn't want them to worry about money, okay? A good life insurance plan can give you peace of mind that if something happens to you, your family will have a safety net to cover mortgage payments, college costs, or other expenses so they can get back on their feet and focus on what's important. Already have coverage through work? Employer-sponsored life insurance may not offer enough protection for your family's needs, and it won't allow... And it won't follow you if you leave your job. Let me tell you from personal experience, it is super satisfying to check life insurance off your to-do list and getting covered can be even more satisfying when you use Policy Genius, okay? Policy Genius knows how valuable your time is. That's why their technology makes it easy to compare life insurance quotes from America's top insurers in just a few clicks. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $25 per month for $1 million of coverage. Some options offer coverage in as little as a week and a Avoid unnecessary medical exams. Policy Genius has licensed award-winning agents who can help you find the best fit for your needs. They work for you, not the insurance companies. That means they don't have an incentive to recommend one insurer over another so you can trust their guidance. Policy Genius is for parents, caregivers, and anyone else who has people who depend on them. They simplify the process of getting life insurance so you can protect the people you love. No wonder they have thousands of five-star reviews on Google and Trustpilot. Your loved ones deserve a financial safety net. You deserve a smarter way to find and buy it. Head to policygenius.com or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you should save. That's policygenius.com. You want to do prize picks shows? Guys, this episode is also brought to you by Prize Picks, okay? We got to test our skills when it comes to this football season. We are ready to go. It's time to make some picks. I know Sharla is talking about the Cowboys this you year. You already know. Sharla thinks that this is the year that they can make it happen. If Dak doesn't do it, they also got a nice little backup in Trey Lance. Is it the year for the Dallas Cowboys or not, my boy? What do you think? No, because I don't know why even people are excited about Trey Lance. Trey Lance has been injury prone his whole career. Mm. Like, what reason do we have to be excited about Trey Lance? Mm. Anyway, the most inciting way to play daily fantasy sports is definitely with prize picks. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Prize picks is really simple to play, okay? I can make my picks and submit my entry in less than 60 seconds. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and enormous selection of players and stat types are what make prize picks the number one daily fantasy sports app, okay? <sighs> what is the game? What is the selection? Who you got this coming week? What are you thinking, Sharla? Man, it depends what sport. Um, Let's go football. Saquon Barkley, you think he's running for 60 yards? Patrick Mahomes? Not, I hope not. It's more than two Cowboys. passing touchdowns? Okay, then. <laughs> like, you know I thought you said saying? the Cowboys ain't nah, going to do it. I got, uh, 
I got CD Lamb getting over 100 receiving yards. I got okay. Dak Prescott throwing for over 250 passing yards. I love it. I love I, it. I yes. love it. Listen, yes. Prize Pick offers weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts like Taco Tuesday. Each Tuesday, Prize Picks discounts a uh, select player projections up to 25% to provide even more value. Prize Picks now offers Apple Pay for quick and easy deposits into your account this football season. So, I'm telling you, this is the place that we are going to be putting our bets in. You are going to make it happen. You are going to make some money, okay? So you go to prizepicks.com slash idiots. Use the code idiots for a first deposit match up to $100. Remember, that is prizepicks.com slash idiots. Use the code idiots for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Now let's get back to the show. We got church announcements, Shote. Uh, yes, sir. We got some church announcements. Uh, Niagara Falls coming up. Windsor, Ontario coming up. Um, Dublin, Ireland. Only a few more tickets uh, for that. Abu Dhabi sold out. Trying to get some more seats released, but thank you so much to Etihad Arena. The day after the UFC fight, same arena, unbelievable. We added some shows in Australia. Go get those all at theandrewschultz.com. That's right. Uh, my church announcements, make sure you listen to Unleashed for Love. Uh, that is the latest project for me and Kevin Hart's company, SBH Productions with Audible. It is a romantic scripted comedy, audio scripted comedy on Audible, starring Alicia Renee, Logan Browning, Pretty V, uh, Jess Hilarious, Giselle Bryant, Portia Williams, Kadeem Hardison, Jasmine Guy, play Alicia's parents. So check that out. Thank you to everybody that has been checking it out. Make sure you leave a review and uh, make sure you leave a ranking. Uh, when you when you when you go uh, listen to that project on Audible, and I gotta remind everybody, man, October seventh, my third annual Mental Wealth Expo is happening at the Marriott Marquis in Times Square. It is a day of mental health education and healing. I bring together some of your favorite therapists, psychiatrists, mental health experts, mental health advocates, and we just have a day of conversation centered around all things mental health. Dr. Alfie Breland Noble will be there. Uh, psychotherapist Elliot Connie will be there. Resma Minicum will be there. Um, Angela Rye will be there. Tamika Mallory will be there. Um, Dr. Rita Walker, Dr. Jay Barnett, just a, a lot of great people in the mental health space, man. And it's a free event from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. You know, it's free every year at the Marriott Marquis in Times Square. So can't wait to see y'all October 7th um, in honor of World Mental Health Day, my third annual Mental Wealth Expo. Now, let's get back to the show. Now, pull that up, Taylor. I want to talk about that. You know, you know. Huh? I saw that already, though. LeBron James agent Rich Paul takes a jab at Steph Curry. Whoa! Rich Paul was on Gilbert Arenas' podcast. <sighs> Salute to Gilbert Arenas. And uh, he said, scroll up, Taylor. We can put the audio in, too. But scroll up, Taylor. Back to the headline. He said, would Golden State Warrior star Steph Curry get discredited like Lakers star LeBron James? In particular, he was talking about the bubble championship, Schultz. Right, right. If Steph wins in the bubble, do they discredit it? Yeah, you got no. to. No. no, they don't. We're still saying the same thing. No, right. That's what Rich Paul said. Listen, if you want people always making the argument for why you're the best, just be number two. It's very simple. When you are number one, there's only one way to go. Yep. So... The, the cost of being LeBron James is everybody trying to not justify why you're the best. Everybody trying to discredit your greatness. That is the only thing that happens when you are unanimous number one of your generation. Yeah. Okay? People would do this with Michael Jordan all the time. Oh, Larry Bird was really better. Magic Johnson was really better. Oh, Hakeem is really better. No. Nobody's really better. Steph is not greater than LeBron. Yes, and he, he is. To you, he is. To, to many, to, to some people, he is not. And to those people, the argument is always fun to and tantalizing to digest on is what if he was? What if he is better? You know how, how I know Steph's better? It? Talk to me. Because LeBron James' agent just bought Steph Curry up. Why Steph Curry? Why if Steph Curry... 
wins in the bubble, he doesn't get discredited. I think LeBron is very frustrated because I think LeBron wants unanimous love and affection, right? He That's wants- That's not the way this works. Uh, exactly, but he wants to be a king. And what is a king supposed to be? Unanimously love and treated uh, as royalty, obviously. And uh, the reality is that's not what happened with kings. You know what? People really felt towards kings. They want to behead them. They, they want to take the crown. Them. Exactly. The rea and the reality is, Bron's not going through anything that nobody else hasn't gone through. Michael Jeffrey the Jordan is the bar. Yep. But they, people would always find a way. There's always something. Oh well, if he'd have came back, those. If he hadn't retired, he wouldn't have won eight in a row. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. The, the Rockets would have beat them if he'd have stayed around. Eh. If it, if it was a split, we all be high right now. There you we know go. what I'm saying? Like, who gives a fuck about that silliness? The reality of the situation is, this is what happens. And guess what? If Steph Curry would have won in the bubble, they'd have been discredited in his championship too. You know why? Because that's what we do. Yeah. Steph, Steph got two rings now that people try to discredit. Yep. Kevin Durant was on the team. And Kevin Durant got two rings now that people try to discredit. Yep. He joined the super team. <laughs> it, it don't it's, matter. It it's don't matter what that we Steph do. won before and after. It's what we do to greatness. It's what we do. As human beings, it's what we do to greatness. Yes, We man. have to find a way to discredit so we justify why we aren't over there. If, oh, I'm not over there because I didn't join a super team. If me, Andrew Schultz, joined the Golden State Warriors, I'm not winning a fucking ring. Yes, you would. In that era with that team? If Kevin Durant and me went there, yeah. Yeah, all you gotta do is sit on the bench. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> you, I guess what I'm saying is I'm not gonna be that different difference maker. But this is what we do to greatness, this is what we do to successful people, it is part of our humanity to do it, yeah. right? This is just what we fucking do. We've built literal forms of government around this concept. Yeah. Human beings have a tendency to tear down those that are in charge, those that are at the top. So we've created democracy so that literally after one term or two terms, we can tear those people down. We used to have <laughs> kings and we we're like, fuck that guy. That's we need a system where we can build someone up, literally vote them into power, and then almost immediately afterwards, tear all that power away from them. Yeah. Because that is what human beings do. So yeah, this is a normal thing and it's something LeBron has to put up with. And you know what? It's, it's the price of greatness. It. There you go. There's nobody on this planet who is not going to go through this. I don't care what field you're in, what industry you're in. They love you, and then when you up and you win too much, they don't want you to win anymore. Yeah. Like literally, like you, you, you don't even have to change anything. Like they just be like, and eh, you know, they wake up one day like, you know what? I don't, I'm not rooting for him no more. You know what I'm saying? You did change. That's you it. became great. You became great. And that's all it, it takes. It, come, it comes with the territory. And it's your job as someone who is great to make all those people hating on you or criticizing you look like haters. That's right. It's your job. That's your job. That comes with the territory. You can't be upset about it. You can't cry about it. You got to go, it is my job to make all these people criticizing me look like haters instead of uh, logical people making very objective criticisms. And there's only one way to do that. By being great. That's it. By being great constantly. That's it. That's it. And you don't get to rest on your loyals with greatness. That's it. You got to keep producing greatness That's it. constantly. That is what happens. Because the moment you slip for real. They coming for your yeah, neck. That's right. And people are like, oh, shit. Oh, he, oh, he, had, he really did have a mishap. Or, oh, yeah. shit. This really did fall off a little bit. Like, soon as that happens, they're like, we see, we told y'all. Try to, try to be the king and telling all the people who are starving because there was a drought and you didn't have a good harvest. Oh, yo, but wasn't I a good king five years ago? Fuck you. Fuck five years ago. That's right. That's right. So, that's the game. Rich Paul was he was cooking on Gilbert Arena, so he said this too. We can add, I want to add this too. Listen to this, Schultz. Mike transcended the game. When Kobe came, Kobe was a silhouette of Mike. Mm -hmm. Right? That's everything. Which is great. But LeBron is the first player to have to deal with a 24-7, 365 news cycle of sports and opinions from those that's not even capable or carry the, the expertise to give a valid opinion, right? Mm -hmm. In addition to, no, I'm not gonna really do it how y'all want me to do it. I'm probably gonna do it how I decide to do it. We all know that don't go over well, right? And so then you have this, you have this environment this, and this sports society that's created Right, and then you, and so now you have the root against. That's a whole nother thing that Mike never had to deal with, because 
his hardest critic was probably Peter Vesey. Yep. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Fucking Peter Vesey. But I just think LeBron's antlers is in platinum and Michael's may be in gold. Why? Because when you think about he had to be compared to Mike. Who did Mike have to be compared to? Talk about it. I don't, you know, I want... He's got to say it. That's his, that's his boy. That's his client. Like, he's doing exactly what he should do. I want friends like that, but I don't want friends like that. <sighs> you know what I'm saying? Nah, you do. You want people no, to believe in you, Charlotte. I do, but not to that extent, because that's just... Nothing he said just now is true. Yeah, but... Other than, yes, there is a, you know, the, the news is different now. Everybody's a critic. But what the fuck that got to do with you on the basketball court? So the thing about this thing is, and I'm sure what Rich understands is that like media is going to dictate history, right? Uh, history is a, is a uh, uh, there's a great Napoleon Bonaparte quote. Uh, history is a set of lies agreed upon. And that goes the same for sports. Not as long as we still alive. But we will die. Hopefully not right. anytime soon, but we <laughs> yes. will die. Yes. And eventually the only people that will be alive are the ones that remember the greatness of maybe it's LeBron, maybe it's a different player. The reality yeah. is, is like we're not talking about Bill Russell right now. But Bill Russell was by far the most dominant basketball player in history. Now there are ways where you could criticize him. Oh, there was only 12 teams he was, in the he league. He was the winningest player in history. I'm not gonna say most dominant. I mean, if you're winning. That's pretty dominant. Because I, I don't, I, I don't, I didn't see Bill Russell, so I don't know what kind of player he exactly. was. Exactly, and these kids didn't see Jordan, and there will be kids that didn't even see LeBron. So there are kid, there are people that only saw you, right? You listen. We can have this discussion with you. I say this all the time. You're the greatest radio personality of your generation, right? Now I only know if we're gonna go. Or I only know two generations of radio, mm -hmm. right? I know you. And I know Howard, okay? That's a few before me, but yeah. No, that I know. That yeah, got you, I, that got you, got you, got you, got you. Your generation, right? Mm -hmm. And I know there are plenty that you're competing against, but I think that you've, I think the only person that we can discuss you with is Howard. If we're talking about generation, Wendy? Yeah, Wendy's there. Absolutely. She had a run, yeah. Absolutely. No, no, and again, again, but like, I don't, I think that you're better than Wendy. I do. Um, I don't think I'm better than Wendy, but you see what I can do there? I can say that. That's great, but it's not up for you to decide, to be honest. That's with you, true. Because you're not That's indulging true. in you. That's true. We are. Pause. Fast forward. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I guess I guess what I'm trying I guess what I'm trying to say is that like the public is gonna decide they're gonna be people that only saw you. And they're gonna see other things from Howard. Maybe they see some of his more recent stuff, these like in-depth interviews, he's a fantastic interviewer, but they never saw any of those crazy antics yeah, from yeah, before. Yeah. And they go, nah, he's not fucking with Charlotte, bro. Charlotte got the serious interviews and he got the goofy stuff. He can be funny on the fly. He got mm -hmm. the donkey of the day, so he's writing a script. Like, he's not fucking with him. Mm -hmm. And that's, they're probably young kids that might even feel that way about LeBron. And they're objectively saying, I've seen Jordan. I've seen him making these mid-range jump shots. He's fall away, but he didn't have no three-point game. He didn't have this, he didn't have that. So history, eventually there's gonna be a time where people just go, yeah, Shaw, Shaw was the greatest but what, at radio. What, they'll just say it. But what about when we as adults tell these little kids, shut the fuck up? Since when do kids listen to adults? You don't know what the fuck you talking about. Why these kids listen to adults? That's we didn't true. listen to adults. Mm -hmm. I guess my biggest problem with Rich Paul's statement is he said LeBron got platinum antlers and Jordan has gold. It's crazy. Like, it's crazy. It, 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 well, at least both platinum. So Because that's because that's what I would say. If I'm comparing you and, and Howard, right? I, I'm not going to say that... I'm going to say... Platinum, I'm saying Howard has platinum because he was the top for me. He's the guy. Until you. Do you see what I'm saying? I, so I, you I can't, appreciate that. Thank you. You but. can't bring someone down when someone else comes around. That's the level that was set. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's the bar. You don't tarnish yeah, 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 exactly, the, exactly. the material. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's no there's no downgrading Michael Jordan. You can't. You can say yeah, yeah, yeah. you can say, oh, they've reached both That's platinum, right. and then That's you right. could be like, yo, he's platinum, but his antlers are bigger. That's right. That's and, fine. And, and Rich Paul would never let somebody do that to Jay-Z. Ooh, that's he, an you know, interesting. No, because he, he loves Hove, right? His, his, the name of his new book is called Lucky Me. 
You know what I mean? Named after one of my favorite Jay-Z records, and he said his favorite Jay-Z record as well. You wouldn't let nobody do that to Hove. You wouldn't let nobody say Drake is platinum, Hove is gold. You know, Kendrick is platinum, Hove is gold. No, they Blast. both, this is top tier. Yes. Upper echelon. And then we can have that discussion. Yeah. And, and, and to be honest, that discussion is gonna change based on what you want. There's gonna be people that listen to you and they listen to Howard and they're gonna be like, I'm gonna be honest, Howard's is not for me. I just don't like it as yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then there's gonna be people that listen to you and those in Howard and they're gonna be like, honestly, Charlotte is I it's not for me. Yeah. But you're gonna have that debate. Yeah. You're gonna have that, and that's where LeBron should be. Absolutely. That's the compliment. Absolutely. When you're being debated with the greatest. That's all you want. That's all you want. That's all you want. Because here's that's reality. It. You're never gonna be greater that's than it. the person that people saw come up. That's right. When we witness Jordan coming up, there's no way that LeBron is gonna be able to uh, supersede those emotions that we had. I'm not gonna lie. When I saw him win that championship with Cleveland, I was like, holy shit, he's the greatest. There, that happened. I'm a, I'm a prisoner of the moment guy, though. Mm -hmm. But that happened to me in that moment. And then I sat back, and I was like, okay, okay, let me just fucking chill out for a fucking second. <laughs> I'm a prisoner of the moment, Salty. Y'all already know this about me. I go to the Hamptons. It's the greatest place on the planet. I go to Burning Man. It's the greatest place on the Yo, planet. The I'm last just thinking thing about I, that. You really were old then. You was in the fucking club with the fucking crown on and the fucking <laughs> I was, cape on back. I was loving it, bro. And, and this was the next year. So he I really thought that they was about to do it again. Again. <laughs> again. But that's me. I know that about me. The last thing I tried is the greatest thing I ever had. Do you know what I mean? So I need a moment just to chill and take it in. Mm -hmm. But that's the greatest accomplishment you can have across generations. If you're part of the same generation, that's it. there's going to be one that's platinum. But across generations, the best you can do is be in the conversation. But I think that's what's, that's what's causing Rich Paul to bring up Steph Curry's name right now. Because the reality of the situation is... He feels like there's discussion within the same it generation. It is, though. Why wouldn't it be if a man beat you three... If, if, if you played this guy four times in the NBA Finals, mm. and Steph and his guys beat you three times mm. the one, mm. and plus this little light-skinned kid from Akron as well came up in Charlotte, North Carolina, revolutionized the game of basketball. He did. Got he did. everybody playing like him from men to women. No, this is... What I would say is Steph is way more influential in the way the game is played. Because you ha you cannot be 6'9", 270 like LeBron is Word up. in order to play his game. No, Nobody's really, he doesn't have a distinguishable characteristic in his game, he's got uh, LeBron, that you could copy. He's got amazing court vision, but besides that, there's not like a move that he's doing that you can copy. Right. He's just so unbelievably well-rounded, healthy, in incredible shape, incredible court vision, unselfish. But Steph has distinguishable characteristics. That's what I'm he's saying. He's launching. That's what I'm saying. And, and LeBron's been around for a long time, so he's been around for a couple of different generations. Tim Duncan got a couple of rings on bronze watch. Dirk Nowitzki got a, a ring on bronze watch. Steph got three on bronze watch. I'm just saying, can't nobody say they ate, like, ate, ate off Michael Jordan like that. That's I mean, there, all I'm there saying. There were people that got rings while Jordan was around. There were people who got... I mean, Detroit. I mean, yeah, but that's part of, I mean, and that's funny, I was having this conversation yesterday. That's all part of Jordan's legacy, overcoming adversity. Detroit was busting his ass. Won, won, won championships back to back, busting his ass. And he, then, had, he had to overcome that adversity, but when he got in position, never lost it. And you're saying LeBron, never lost it. LeBron has? A few, uh, quite a few times. Mm. Like, quite a few times. Is LeBron... One of the greatest to ever do it? Absolutely. Top five? Absolutely. You know what I mean? Top three? Absolutely. Well, I got him at four. But 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 top three? Absolutely. In most people's eyes. Top two? He's actually top two in most people's eyes. Yep. They debate whether he's one or he's two, which I think is totally disrespectful to Kobe, Jelly, Bree, and Bryant. But whatever. All I'm simply saying is to say that Jordan has platinum, I mean, Jordan has gold and Braun has platinum. Come on, Rich Paul. Come on. Yeah, but again, I, I'm not looking for an objective opinion from the guy's best friend and agent. Like, I, I just, <sighs> I, I don't think you're ever going to get that. And I like the fact that he's riding for his dude. I, I do like that. Yeah, and it's yeah, also, yeah. he's not riding for, he's not saying, yo, Ray Allen is the greatest. No disrespect to Ray Allen, but like nobody's saying that. He's saying that his guy who is in the top two conversation is better. I'm okay with that. I don't think you're a delusional 
I don't think you're like a delusional dick rider if you're saying that. I ain't gonna say call you a dick rider, but you kind of like delusional. My point to is, reduce Michael Jordan to gold. When I think gold, no, no, I think music. That gold is crazy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so and it's a half a million records. records. Like, what? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. God yeah. damn. No no, no. No, 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 no. The gold comment was crazy, but just thinking that LeBron is better than Jordan and that's your man and you've ridden with him forever and you've seen the greatness. And to be honest, how old is Rich Paul? He's probably our age, right? He knows. Younger. He younger. He knows. Talk that shit, Chris. Talk that shit. Here's the difference, though, because I was thinking about this this week, and I was watching Bron's first final runs with Cleveland, right? He had, ter he had terrible teams around him, right? I mean, yeah. if you look in retrospect, he had nobody there. You know, Ilgakis, yeah, yeah, Marie, yeah, yeah. Mo Williams. I mean, these guys were barely NBA players. But my question with LeBron, and this is what Rich Paul plays into it, is I think LeBron is the first superstar who was also his own GM, right? Jordan obviously had power. He had sway. Jerry Krause was the GM, right? That's a really interesting argument. So I think the reason Bron's not the GOAT is also his own fault because I think he's picked too many of the players around him. Steph has influence. He's not the GM with the Warriors. So when did, so, when did Bron start doing that is the question I, I would ask. he's had that. Almost left, immediately. Almost immediately. No, nah, you don't I mean, pick, that was part of the reason. You don't pick those teams he had around him earlier. <laughs> like, come on, <laughs> yeah, stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's why he wasn't doing it. Like Nobody wanted to come to Cleveland, though. That's, that's true. But also, he, the reason why he basically left Miami is because, um, is, what's his name? Uh, I can't believe I'm forgetting. Uh, Riley. Riley. Yo, is, is that Riley said, I'm the GM. LeBron has his own agency. This isn't allowed to happen. Yeah, it's unprecedented. This is unprecedented. You're yeah. not supposed to happen. It's the biggest nod, nod, wink, wink in the history of sports. You're not allowed to have the top player in the league also run his own agency and make moves behind the scenes. And be the GM. And be, he's the You're GM. You're basically signing the deals for your own clients that you're agency, making. Though, though. He doesn't run the agency. Yeah, Chris Paul. Come on. <laughs> no, no, but he doesn't run the right. agency. I mean, come on. We all know what it is. So if he isn't on that level, he, uh, he owns more of that than these other players is what I'm saying. I, listen, what, what I would say is if your argument is that he is the first, like, player GM, okay? Right. Now, if your argument is that he's the first player GM and that was to his detriment because he didn't make great GM moves, exactly. that's fair. What I would also say is that being the first player GM – and I wonder if Kobe was a player GM. Actually, I think he was. Because I think Kobe was like, Shaq, got to go. Weren't they all, though? Like, when you get to I that level, Magic, Magic Johnson. Magic yeah. got coaches fired. I'm yeah. saying over personnel. I don't yeah, think like any actually player hiring players. I think Kobe players. was that. I'll be honest. I think Kobe was super involved in those decisions. But let's call LeBron the first, like, right. player GM. You could also make an argument for that being part of his greatness because he was literally building the teams that ended up winning. Now, maybe he would have won even more with someone who was more specialized, but he was responsible for those teams in a way that other players were not responsible. Right, but what I'm saying, when he was in Miami and there was someone with real power like Pat Riley who was vetoing in all likelihood. And they, they were doing amazing. He's doing amazing. Yeah. He would have won for years if he had stayed there. I Dick. think the only thing, yeah, that tripped him yeah, up yeah, yeah, is... But Riley don't play that shit. He Riley's not. like, you're not the king over here, I'm the king. There's right, one yeah. king of Miami, and it's Pat Riley. No, you're right, because Miami's been to the championship, like, what, two times since Braun left? Like, they've always been. They went last yeah. year, yeah. and they went in the bubble. Yeah, with teams that you would not think were championship yeah, ballers. Yeah, 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 but yeah. But that's yeah. also heat culture, and Eric Spolstra is the greatest coach in the NBA that nobody yeah, gives credit that nobody to, talks but he's about. undeniably the greatest. And Pat Riley instills an unbelievable culture um, in that team, and everybody just gets on board. And Jimmy uh, Butler is just absolutely fantastic. He's a fantastic player that will reinforce the culture. Why don't more people want to go play in Miami? I think it's starting to happen a little bit. Like Miami's a beautiful like city with a great history. Like, why wouldn't you want to go play in Miami? I think I think it's starting to happen. I mean, if you if really I was KD, I would went to Miami. Say what? I would went to KD. I would went to Miami before Brooklyn. If I was KD, bro. Here's the thing. This is how amazing Miami's culture is, and the stronghold that. Spolstra, Pat Riley, and Jimmy Butler have over Miami. These are NBA players, right? Young guys full of testosterone that can fuck 90% of the women on the planet. And they are in Miami. Not getting a dick wet every night. Not 
fucking around, not getting caught up having fucking babies everywhere, not getting in trouble, not getting car crashes. It's right there. We were in Miami for four months. It was tantalizing. Yeah, it's like three little Alex's in Miami right now from what Probably. I Probably. <laughs> no. yeah. Probably. Don't, don't do that, Charlotte. <laughs> you asshole. The point is, <laughs> the point is, that's what happens when you have a real strong fucking culture. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. That's but, probably why they don't want to go there. Like, the big players. Nah, talk on that. Why? Because they want to have that power and have that control over their team. And, and have they that know fun. They want to have, have that fun. fun. And it's like, yo, we ain't having all that fun. Yeah. Let me tell y'all young boys something, y'all young players. You know what y'all should learn how to do? Win. Yeah. And you know how you learn how to win? By getting with winners. And Pat Riley's a fucking winner. I mean, you want to be with Pat Riley. You want to be with Popovich. You want to be with people that know how to motherfucking put together teams and win. Because clearly y'all don't. Bro, I saw a player who, uh, you know, I will not name this weekend. In the Hamptons? At the club. And it was one of those things like. Has he got a ring? No, nah, of course and, not. And you look at him and say he's never going to get one. And you saw his habits in the club and realized why he's never going to get one. I, I didn't see his habits in the club. I wasn't looking. I just, I was walking in and I saw him walking in and I was just like, if I was where you are in your career, you wouldn't see me in the club. Now, that's not to say that you don't deserve to party. It's fucking Labor Day weekend. Doesn't mean you don't deserve to hang out with your friends, et cetera. But if I was where you are in your career, you would never see me in the club until I dispelled some of the myths about me. I know exactly who you're talking about. That's crazy. Yeah. Can you say, say that? Can you say it and we believe it? Yeah. Nope. Oh, that's, a, that's who I thought. Nope. And when I oh, say who no, when I say who it is, y'all know exactly who it is. I would have thought hard. Bleep all these names. Oh, uh, get the fuck out of yeah. here. No, he's right where he need to be. He need a little breather. No. <laughs> <laughs> Please let him party all he wants. What else he got to celebrate? Please. He, anyway, my point, and again, I'm not judging because I understand we need But that. no, you're right. Yeah. But you got to know what the public is going to think about you. They and should make him go, pay to get in the clubs. <laughs> I'm dead serious. They should make him God pay damn. to get in the club. Him no. and everybody he's with. That's funny. Yo, I'm such and such. We don't care. And also, like, you cannot party at home because we all buying tickets. Mm. Now, granted, he doesn't play for a Like, we're all buying tickets. So if you're the club and you're actively getting this guy drunk before he got a game tomorrow. Oh my God. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Bleep that too. <laughs> oh, is he playing? Yes. Oh my God. See, you don't even know. Oh my God. Because he don't fucking. Nah, nah, that'll give it away. Yeah. So I'm not even going to say that. Yeah, yeah. Bleep <laughs> a lot of the things that are going <laughs> to give it away. Yeah. Y'all got to figure it out. Yeah. Y'all get in the comments and tell us who we talking about. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm with you 100%. I'm like, bruh, you cannot do that. Like, if you if you are going to go party, you got to be in private. You can't be in a public ass place like this. He don't deserve nothing. No free pizza, no free <laughs> drinks. He should have to pay to get in clubs. You should have to pay for every time he go through, what is it? Wait in line. Wait in line, man. Yeah. For real. If you care about your team, you will respect the players. And by respecting the players, I mean you will not give them alcohol. You're not giving them carbohydrates. We're not feeding them ice cream. You're not giving them right. extra calories. You're not giving them anything while they're preparing for the regular season or during the regular season. If they have a great regular season, we going into a little break. Please, let's party. Let's dance. Let's hang out. How dare he you celebrate Labor Day? He don't even work. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> what the fuck? You, you've been celebrating Labor Day he? for years. How dare he? <laughs> God damn. That's crazy to me, yo. Okay. Um, I'd be furious. He ain't on my team, but I'd be furious. Oh, salute to Rich Paul. Salute to Gilbert Arenas podcast. Do we have uh, we have another ad? Yeah, we got some more ads, bro. All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second because you know what time it is. It's fall, okay? And we cannot fall off in the dick game when it comes to our, our wives, our partners, um, our side pieces, not mine, not Charla's. You don't have any. Exactly, we don't have any. But like a girl like Taylor deserves, you know, good dick. Uh, even if there's a gentleman that's starting a new family. A new family. You know what I mean? So That's so probably what got her crazy now. He probably was on it already. Honestly, you, you, you're 100% right. And how are we going to maintain that? How are we going to do that? We're going to do that with the Chew. Blue Chew has got our backs. Blue Chew, okay? Same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, but this is the Chew. This one we rock with. This one you're going to rock with. And you're going to get your first month of the hardest dick in your life for free 
for the free. All you got to do is uh, go to bluechew.com, use the promo code IDIOTS, and you can get your first month for free. You just got to pay $5 shipping. Look at that. Look at that. Bluechew.com, promo code IDIOTS, pay $5 shipping, and you are good to go. Now, Charlotte, what else we got? Elevate you, baby. Salute to Elevate You. And I want to tell y'all more about Elevate You because it's something that's been keeping us feeling fresh, healthy, and energized lately, okay? Elevate You, Vitality Daily Greens, co-founded by the OG Steve Harvey and formulated by Harvard scientists, okay? It's a game-changing formula that boosts your body's mitochondrial production, providing you with sustained energy throughout the day. No more relying on coffee or unhealthy energy drinks to get you going. It's packed with over 30 superfoods, vitamins, and minerals to feel energy energized, focused, and ready to tackle your day, okay? I know how hard it is to stay on top of your health and nutrition game. Sometimes it feels like there just aren't enough hours in the day to get everything done. But with Elevate You, you don't have to worry about that anymore, okay? This stuff is packed with all the nutrients and vitamins you need to keep your body running like a well-oiled machine. And the best part, it's super easy to use. Just mix a scoop into your water or juice and you're good to go. And it comes in three delicious flavors, chocolate, tart cherry, and original greens. And check this out. Elevate You also has a 60-day money-back guarantee. If you are not 100% satisfied, they'll refund your full purchase price. All right? Take control of your health today and experience more daily energy with Elevate You Vitality Daily Greens. Go to ElevateYou.com, L-E-V-A-T-E-E-Y-O-U.com, and use promo code IDIOTS for 15% off your entire purchase. Now let's get back to the show. Uh, remember, guys, it's after Labor Day. So no more sleeping with white women. Just want to throw that out there, okay? And also, we didn't salute the GOAT, man. We did a Ooh. whole segment about sports talk and didn't salute the GOAT. Prime time, Dion motherfucking Sanders, one of the greatest motivational speakers of all time. We have these conversations about coaches who can make their players run through a fucking brick wall. And he could do it. Can't nobody make you run through a goddamn brick wall. <sighs> Like Dion motherfucking Can Sanders. you explain what the drama is uh, about? I'm trying to understand. Akash was trying to explain it to us on, on Flagrant, and I still didn't get it. It seemed drama? I don't think it's drama. I think that, you know, there was drama when he left Jackson State because people wanted him to stay at Jackson State because it right. was an HBCU. Right. He went to Colorado, and um, I think that you had a lot of people who didn't think, which is weird to me, who didn't think that a lot of these kids that he bought from an HBCU could perform at this high level, which makes no sense because oh, he— Oh, did he bring HBCU players well, I mean, people, there? But, but, but here's the thing. Yeah. These guys played for an HBCU, but Travis Hunter was a fucking four-star recruit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. his son was like a four-star recruit. Like, these are some of the top, you know, talented so recruited players in the recruited country. Basically, he recruited the talent to the school that wouldn't usually right. get this talent. That's all. And now he's taking that talent to where they usually, usually would, be. would be. You know what I mean? Got gotcha. you. And, and, uh, you and know. he's also prolific as a coach. Oh I think my they, god! Yeah. And nobody expected this. Is they, they beat TCU? TCU's ranked number seventeen. They were the runner-ups in the national championship game last year. You know, he comes in with eighty-six new players. They were twenty-one. 21-point underdogs. Unbelievable. You know what I mean? His son <laughs> threw for 500 oh my yards God. or something. Oh, my God. Threw for over 500 yards. Wow. Connected with four different receivers. All of them had over 100 yards rushing. I'm like, yo, man, if if if, if this is how Colorado going to be playing all year, this is going to be my favorite team to watch. Bro, can you talk, talk to me about this? I think it was Travis Hunter kid who was playing on both sides of the ball. I think they said he played like 127 snaps. Not sustainable, though. Of I don't course wanna, not sustainable. Yeah, I don't want to see that for that young man. But... Day. What a talent. What a fucking talent. Unbelievable. What a talent. He had an interception. He had 11 catches. He had over 100 plus yards. Like he is, and he wants the Heisman. He already claimed. He's like, I want the Heisman. And just to, you know, clarify for people who are watching from abroad, in football, you usually play one. American football. American football, the real football, you usually play one position, and that is usually an offensive position or a defensive position. Some people will also play what is called special teams, and that's when you do the kickoff, uh, the returns. That's why Dion was kickoff. special. Because Dion would line up at wide receiver every now and then. Yep. He was one of the best defensive backs ever. And he was a punt returner, punt returner and a kickoff That's returner. right. So, but... Uh, so it's very rare that you see, especially when you get really specialized in college football, to see a wide receiver and a defensive. Uh, what, what is he? Uh, what is he? Cornerback, right? Cornerback. He's a cornerback, right? Yeah. Um, 
not only is it rare because it takes so much talent to play either position, but also you're going to be exhausted. Like you're going 100. Uh, he, he must have been on the blue chew. He must have been blue chew yeah. and elevate you. <laughs> I'm serious, man. There's no reason for Travis Hunter to do what he did. And didn't look gassed or nothing and was yeah. giving it his all every fucking play. I'm like, y'all don't want that for that kid, man. And the, I, I, yeah, yeah. He's, and, he's and amazing. The reason, we don't need that. Yeah, the reason, obviously, you say that is because, and people are starting to speculate about this with AAU basketball, is you only have so much wear and tear that your muscles, your joints can take. That's right. So if he's playing literally twice as much my as God. any other athlete would play, my that's going to take away from your professional career. My God. And I think that's what they're saying a lot of these AAU basketball kids. It's like, oh, he's got AAU knees, right? And I'm like, what the fuck is that? And he goes, well, these AAU teams are traveling. They're, they're playing fucking five games a weekend or whatever it is. So by the time those kids reach college, mm -hmm. their knees are taking a fucking pounding. Absolutely. Uh, does he get two salaries if he's playing both sides? Two salaries. Uh, isn't that interesting, though? It should be, right? Well, he wouldn't because obviously he's in college. You no, can't. I mean, like, say but if he goes pros, to the league. No, yeah. but isn't that interesting? You yeah. should be able to. And I think that's why a lot of them would be like, I'm not doing that. Yeah, it's not so worth it. It's not worth it. I could get injured now he likes two it, times the chance. Of course. Yeah, he loves it. And and maybe you don't get two salaries, but maybe you get the highest salary that your position would get. So in other words, if you're that dynamic that you can play on both sides of the ball, I'm not just going to play you as a corner. I'm not just going to play you, pay you as a wide receiver. I'm going to pay you as wide receiver plus. What about the guy on plus. the Angels? Isn't he the baseball version? Shohei Otani, yeah. who is arguably, like, you know, some might say the most talented baseball player alive right now, who is a pitcher, who is a dynamic pitcher, and also was leading the major leagues in home runs. Mm. But that's normal, though. No, no, no. no. Pitchers usually pitchers hit, suck don't at they? that. No, only in pitchers the uh, National League. Only in the National League. Oh. They hit, and even then, you hide them. Yeah. You're mm. talking about your cleanup hitter is also your pitcher. And keep in mind, pitchers play one every five games. Like, that's how difficult pitching is. Damn. Right? Because your arm is fucking yeah. dead for a week. Yeah, I don't watch baseball. Neither do I. I like but it when it's everybody still impressive to see somebody do it. Like, you're talking about Bo Jackson type shit. That's Deion what I'm type shit. When the everybody fact was that Deion could play baseball. Come on, man. Come on, football and baseball in the same week. I like baseball when everybody was on steroids. But Travis Hunter. I agree. Travis Hunter, Edwards, Jimmy Horn Jr., Xavier Weaver, Beast. And when you got four receivers that's all got over 100 yards receiving, I don't need Travis Hunter on every play yeah. on offense. You know what I'm saying? You know what's nice about this like career arc for Deion Sanders is that I think a lot of times when you have these incredibly successful athletes, and it definitely happens with black athletes more, a lot of their success can be chalked up to this raw, pure athleticism. Mm -hmm. And then you see a guy like, and he had it, right? Like they said, oftentimes when it was like a, a down, you know, you had to do like the run the 40 yard dash thing. He was like, whatever the fastest score is, take a 10th off of that and just put that in. <laughs> Cause I'm going to beat them no matter what. And he had that. But when you see him go into a coaching position, you can't coach someone to run 4.2. At all. You have to be able to lead players. You have to be able to understand the game. You got to be a leader of men, man. And, 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 and really truly understand the game. So it's like, it's great to see somebody who you could have chalked up his success to just being purely athletic now go, oh shit, not only was he an elite athlete, he was an elite athlete with an incredible acumen for the game, and that's why he was able to harness that athleticism in the most uh, you know, profound way. And now you're getting to see him just have the understanding of the game and bestow that on these other young talents. Now you have to go look at Deion's career and go, oh, wow. This was yeah. a fundamental genius that had elite athleticism. And usually those people that have the elite athleticism, they don't give a fuck about the fundamentals because they've been able to beat people off the athletics. And patience. I watched Shannon Sharp spit all over Stephen A. Smith yesterday, and he said one of the <laughs> biggest things that Deion Sanders has is patience. He said, he, he said he's one of the most patient people people. And so he's able to sit there with those kids and when they don't get something he don't get frustrated, he don't get upset he just has a level of patience with these kids. And I'm like, wow. When, and then when you think about it and you see him and how they respect him you can see that. Because we tend to lose patience with people who lose patience with us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like if yeah. somebody's trying to teach you something but they seem frustrated about it and they're like, how the fuck you can't understand? When you're doing stuff like that to a person, it makes me Lose patience with that individual. And lose confidence. They lose confidence. Yeah. Something that he does to these kids, man, he really makes them feel like they can run through walls. And there's this uh, quote, I actually posted it on my Instagram earlier, where Dion was like, 
He just really, truly does not give a fuck about the opinions of other people. Mm. And I think that he is able to convey that. We can insert that clip too, but he's able to convey that to these players because these players have to silence all outside noise, yeah. right? Like if, if you're reading all week how you don't stand a chance, how you're a 21-point underdog, yeah. how you might not even win a game in September. They said Colorado may not even win a game in September. If you're a player and you're seeing all this shit, subconsciously you might buy into it. Of course. And that shit will affect your performance. Of course. You really do become... Like, your thoughts really do become things. Yeah. So if you constantly taking that in, like, oh, man, we not going to win, man. We 21-point underdogs, man. Man, they say we not going to win a game in September, man. You think we going to win a game in September? You can't come in here with none of that self-doubt talk. Don't come in here with that negative talk. Mm. They were convinced they were going to show up. They were going to convince they were going to win. Dion kept saying, we coming, which was crazy pause-worthy. But he kept saying that over and over. We yeah. coming. We coming. We coming. Right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then Deion said, Deion said, oh, we here now. After they fucking won, <laughs> he didn't say that. <laughs> He didn't say that. He said, we not coming no more. We here now. I'm sitting on the couch like, where is Cameron when you need him? You know what I mean? But shout out to Colorado. I'm watching y'all. I'm, I'm, y'all might be my favorite team. To, I know y'all going to be my favorite team to watch all year. So Dion's so proven as a coach. Why hasn't he got a shot at the pros yet? Do you think? Well, I think he's still being proven. You think? Well, yeah, because yeah, he didn't play at the highest level, right? Yeah, yeah. He did it with Jackson State and everybody. Like, coach at the highest level. Yeah, uh, but now, sorry, coach. Yeah, and now, now he coaches Jackson State. Now he's coaching at this Colorado. isn't even the highest level. The highest level is the SEC, what we were talking about before. But if he's dominant out here in the Big Twelve, it's called. I think it's the Big Twelve next year. I don't think it's the Big oh. Twelve now. What is it called? This whatever what whatever is, division. I forgot what they're in now. Please but. believe there'll be opportunities. There'll be opportunities. Man, Deion Sanders is... This, this headline right here is amazing. If Deion Sanders can shock the world in game one, imagine what he's going to do with Colorado in the coming years. Why do they like coming so much? <laughs> like, you, like that. Like, yeah, you like that. Deion you like that. <laughs> is going to win a national championship. He's going to win a national championship. But that thing you posted was fire when he was just like, listen, I'm him. I'm, I'm been him, him. Man. Like, But he wasn't even saying it arrogant. He was saying it matter of factly. He's, you have to understand, I am him. I have been him for years, and I am still him. Like, it was just beautiful. What about me would make you think that I care about your opinion of me? Your opinion of me is not the opinion that I have of myself. You ain't make me, so you can't break me. You didn't build me, so you can't kill me. I, I, you know what? God, God established me. So you ain't nothing you can do to me. I, I've been dealing with this foolishness since Pee Wee football, man. I've been him. I've been a difference maker, a game changer. I've been that guy. So what will change now that I'm coaching? Not a darn thing. I'm not even playing the game, and you got an opinion of me. I don't care, and I wish the world thought like that. Youngsters, do not give a darn what opinion people have of you, as long as that opinion is not consistent of that of yourself. You be you. I'm not planning to make you feel good about me. I already feel good about me. I'm good. <laughs> Unapologetic, unwavering yeah. self-belief. Yeah. Why would I let what you guys think about me affect what I think about me? I know how I feel about me, so it doesn't matter what any of y'all think. I, I am him. I promise Bro, you, if you, ever look, if, if you ever look around the world and you look at all these different people in all these different industries and if you ever wonder why... Everybody seems off of their game sometime. It's because we all are listening to the opinions of other motherfuckers. 100%. You have to drown that shit out. You like to be able to disconnect yourself from what people say about you in this era yeah. is a superpower. Well, facts. But you have to do it because that facts, shit will fuck facts, with you. Facts, we just bro. had this conversation last week. I'm just talking about you. You can see how people can hear things about themselves, read things about themselves, and internalize that. 100%. To not be able to internalize that or not take it in at all and know who the fuck you are and what you're here to do. Very it's difficult. It's a superpower, man. Very difficult. It's a superpower. Uh, Asking Idiots, Taylor. What was that about Russ? Scroll up real quick. What did Russ say? Russ claims corrupt corporations. Oh, salute to Russ, man. Russ, you winning. Stop worrying about what them corporations are doing. Um, what, what we happened? got, Taylor? I forgot. I just saw Russ talking about it. Shout out, Russ, man. Salute to Russ. Ooh! 
God damn it, Taylor. Sorry. That fucking dude got you frazzled. Like, God damn. Knowing that man at home right now burping a little baby got her losing her mind. Uh, Coulda, woulda, shoulda (laughs) said, would you rather aliens or Jesus be real? Ooh. ooh. Jesus. Ooh. Ooh. Jesus, without a doubt. Damn. I think Jesus Why without a doubt, though? Because I think Jesus... Say again? He could take out the aliens then. Well, no, Why we I, wanted to take aliens out, you fucking evil colonizer, Chris? Why you want to take them out for no reason? Because they're here to take me out. <laughs> you, don't you, know. Know. you don't know that. They that's might just, be coming peace. That's just what we do. Jesus Christ. <laughs> now, what if people thought about Taiwan like that? <laughs> Facts. You know what I'm saying, Chris? Facts. God damn, Chris. No, nah, the, um, I, you know, Jesus, I don't know. I just feel like so many people have changed their lives and behaved in better ways because of, uh, you know, what they thought Jesus, of who they thought Jesus to be. I think aliens being real would humble the earth way more than Jesus being real. Now, keep in mind, Jesus being real, he doesn't need to be the son of God. But for there to be this historical figure who is riling shit up and pushing back and pushing back against authority and corruption and being so... God, well, I almost said goddamn. No, being <laughs> and being so about that life and being rebellious and like if, if the the quote unquote real story of Jesus, not kind of like the the hippie yeah, dude, whatever. Let's all eat together. But I'm talking about the dude who is who is really about that action, mm-hmm. walking around the temple, flipping fucking tables. What are you guys about? Like, I would love for that guy to be. Ain't real. Nobody's scared of that right now. Yeah. Say again. They not. They, they, I would love that. All guy. his te- all the teachings are here. All the stories about Jesus are here right now. Don't get me wrong. Let me let me take that back. There's plenty of people who are God fearing who worship Jesus, mm-hmm. who abide by Jesus and everything Jesus does. There's, a, there's plenty of people on this planet that do that. Mm-hmm. But it's 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 if aliens came back right now, I feel like aliens would humble people more than Jesus would. We would find a way to politicize Jesus and find a way to debate about him. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. If he was black, that might turn a lot of people off. If he really, like, if he really comes back, described the way he looks in the Bible, that might turn a lot of people off. You know what I mean? It might. And, and, it and, might. And, and if he comes back telling you, telling certain people that they're not, that they're wrong, like, right? That's gonna turn people off too. Yeah. But who would he tell is wrong? Evil, evil doers. Yeah. yeah. Now he would yeah. tell Christians. Yeah. But Christians would have to take that. Christians would have to take that. He's like, yo, I'm the son of God. I think one of the dopest things about Jesus is he's not a man. This is the son of God. So this is the this is the epitome of what a man should try to be, even though we will fail. And it's nice to have that example of what we should be, but not a man. Understanding the whole time, we cannot achieve that, but we should try. When you try to live up to a man, you constantly feel like shit that you haven't lived up to the standards of that other human being. Yeah. It's awesome that there's this person who is perfection, right? That we cannot live up to, but we should fucking try. And by trying, we will live a better life, not only for ourselves, but for the people around us. But what you a know beautiful he's not gonna idea. Ju- but you, I, I agree with you, but you know he's not gonna just be judging Christians. Because he's gonna be judging all of us. He's not gonna be judging nobody, he's Jesus. Thou shalt not judge. No, nah, he's gonna be judging. He gonna be like that's up to daddy. That's like, daddy gonna be judging. He, if I'm Jesus, I gotta question some things. So no, I gotta you be, gonna question, I, but I gotta he be had like, his yo. man. He knew his man was gonna fucking uh, rat him out. He already knew at dinner. He said, "Yo, come to dinner. I know you are gonna fuck up." But come you wouldn't look around and be that like, "That dude is the realist." But you wouldn't look around. Pull and be, back up in the town on a donkey. What's up? Do what you need to do. But you wouldn't look do around. Do what you need to do. You yo. wouldn't look around just a little bit and be like, "I died for this." That's what I died yeah. for. Yeah, but he knew it was lit up there too, bro. <laughs> he knew it was lit. He knew where he was going, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's like, he was going to the Hamptons. You know what I mean? Like, what about the non-Christian cultures that, like Muslims, Hindus, all that? He's not. They, they, he's their not culture about. is just like destroyed. It's not destroyed because all those people do believe in Jesus as a they prophet. Do. They believe in so Jesus. So they're gonna be like, oh shit, okay, Jesus was really that dude, and maybe Jesus comes back and he's like, yo, yeah, Muhammad, yeah, we sent Muhammad next. 
Maybe he comes back, he's like, yo, I, I was there for that time. I had to get it. We sent Muhammad next. We're all, we're all saying the same thing. We're all doing the same thing because dad is telling us to all do the same thing. Oh, you guys got this wrong about this thing over here. And Christians, you guys uh, switch this old thing up here at the fucking meeting of uh, Constantinople, whatever that yeah. shit is. Yeah. You know, you switch these things up. Yeah. But like the, the messaging, he'll just clear up the messaging. Let me ask you this. Coulda, woulda, shoulda. You want to ask an idiot, let an idiot ask you a question. Okay. What if Jesus is, is an alien? alien? Wow. Oof. What if Jesus was an now, alien? Now, technically, Oof. anyone not from this planet who is here is what? An alien. You know what I'm saying? All of that stuff we thought was the, the walking on water, you know, the turning the, the two loaves of bread and fish to feed 40,000, 5,000, however much it was. Most of the Jesuses I've met in my life have been illegal aliens. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So there you is know. some credibility yes, to your argument. That's right. That's right. The resurrection, how you know he just didn't beam up real quick, you know what I mean? Power up, come back, you know what I'm saying? Mm. We'll go back up to the spaceship, come back down. I'm just saying. Mm. Jesus could have been an alien. Mm. I just hope he looks extremely Jewish. Say what? I just would hope he looked extremely Jewish when he comes back. Why? He is Jewish. I know, but people don't realize that. So I would hope. But he, he wouldn't look extra. Jewish like you guys. What, you mean like he black like, Jewish, black Jewish people? No, no, well, no. He would look like Sephardic Dave. Sephardic Jews. Like Dave, maybe. He'd look Arab. Dave? No, nah, yeah, he'd look Arab. No, he's Arab. He's he'd, he'd, look, he'd look like Nipsey Hussle. Like Dove. He'd look like, like Dove. Dove. You think yeah. Dove? Arafat, something like that, maybe. Yeah, he'd look Palestinian. Why would he be fat? <laughs> you said he'd be fat? <laughs> yes, you did. Didn't he just say that? Chris really trying to rile up the Jews. He's really trying to rile up the Jews, my fat? boy. I don't understand. Um, Jesus, dude, Jesus is dope, bro. Jesus Put some respect dope. on Jesus, man. Put some respect on Jesus' name, man. Uh, ooh, Ryan Cooper says, what is a questionable fetish that you can't won't understand. Feet. Hmm. Nah, feet is dope. Nah. Everybody getting feet. Nah. Barbie came out. Y'all couldn't stop talking about feet. Stop dick y'all, riding. Y'all. Stop dick riding. <laughs> y'all. Y'all. All of the Hollywood. It's a billion dollar movie. Billion dollar movie yeah. sold on feet. Why was it sold on feet? I didn't see it. What do you mean why? The whole ad, the billboard with her little heels pointed up. They got her toes out. Really? Yeah, y'all all like feet too. You're just scared. Don't be scared. What would Jesus do? Um, a questionable what would fetish. Jesus do? Think about what Jesus would do. I think getting peed on is a questionable fetish that I don't quite uh, understand. Like, why would you want to get peed on? Yeah, that's that's. You know what I'm saying? Like, like lining up for the golden shower shit. is kind of nah, crazy. I don't fuck with that at all. You know what I mean? I can understand if you were in the shower and y'all just you know washing together and it's a joke. Yeah, you know, I mean, some shit comes out and you're like, oh, you peeing, you know what I mean? Yeah. But just to like lay down to get that goddamn golden yeah, shower is crazy. It's crazy. Isn't it the same? Taking a shit. Isn't it the same as like when guys like to come on girls though? What you mean? Girls like that. So you it's saying girls for, for that. guys to like to come, pee? Come, or? Come, come and urine aren't the same things, Taylor. I know they're yeah, not. Yeah, but why but do girls always think... ask for that? Why are girls so fucking hungry for that? For what? <laughs> just to get drenched up. <laughs> I, 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 this this thing, this, this thing about this thing. That's, no, a, that's a good asking, point. Are you saying for the man to pee on. or the woman Either to want it? Either or. A woman peeing on a man, a man peeing on a woman. Like, why would you want that? Girls love it, bro. They they cold. You know, girls nah, but always that's, cold. That's a good observation because why? <laughs> why do people like up. to come on a girl's face or something exactly. like that? Exactly. Like, it's like this. It's still your... Drenching the girl, so it wasn't matter. I mean, women got to answer that question. It's the same difference. Like they you, love like, it. Like if you're giving a guy a head, you might swallow the, the, the cum, okay. but you ain't gonna swallow his pee. Yeah. And pee is more healthy for you, I think. It's got some vitamins in there. Yeah. Ooh, this is a good one. Michael Stewart wants to know Taylor if you could only eat what? one food for the rest of your life, what oh, would it yeah. be? That's that. crazy. One food, not one cuisine. One one food. food. Oh, dude, that one's fucking tough, man. Um, Cheese steaks. I knew you were going to say that. No. That's what you say, say. I would say mangoes. <laughs> mangoes. You will get tired of mangoes. I love How you mangoes. eat mangoes for breakfast, Bro, lunch, and dinner, yo? Mango? It's easy. Oh, the fruit? You want to have the yes. shit in your teeth all day? Nah, bro. You want, why would I have, I'm not talking about like, you could, you know. Sp- nah, mangoes you can get tired of. What would you have? One food for the rest of my life. It's, it, it is a pizza. cooked, it is a meal or a piece of food? Yeah, I can't, do, I, yeah, I don't understand what he's saying. He says one food. Like a thing, like a th- pizza. That's just like a thing, maybe. Oh, God. It's, it's not your peanuts? Pizza. 
No, bro, pizza's so me. good, but no, dude, because I don't, don't want the get, bread. Yeah, but you don't get tired of it. You don't. You don't get tired of pizza? Ooh. Of course, Chris. High-end sushi. <laughs> Chris said high-end sushi. Bro, no, nah, Everybody sushi. in this room is so fucking stereotypical. Yes. <laughs> like, like, what else is Chris supposed to say? The chicken. <laughs> the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, God, what would I have, man? Um, honestly, this is what I'd have. A uh, burrito bowl. Mm. So the guac... Chicken, the hot sauce, the salsa, burrito bowl. That's it. If I get tired of the chicken, I just eat that guac and that rice and that salsa. If I get tired of the rice and salsa, I just eat that fucking chicken. But that's what I've ha I'd have. Dynamic enough. For me, it would definitely be probably salmon. I don't know. It, it would be a fish. I don't know if it would be salmon or my you that mercury poisoning. You're gonna be yeah. dead. Nah, man, salmon or my my one of those two fishes would be mine. You know what I mean? I can I can I can do seafood all day long. Scroll down, scroll down, Terry. Let's do one more. Scroll down. Let's do one more. Go down, 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 go Rank the importance of these qualities. One, two, th one through three. Self-awareness, confidence, hard work. Ooh, I like that. We can end on that. Rank the importance of those qualities. Hard work. Uh, you go first. Um, Here's what I found. I'm gonna say self-awareness, confidence. I'm gonna actually keep it in that order. Self-awareness, confidence, hard work. Wow. Are, 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 eh, hold on, wait, 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 yeah. Each other's. yeah, self awareness, confidence, hard work in that order. I don't think there's anything more important than self awareness. And the reason I say that because we live in a society where so many people lack self awareness because so many people don't know who they are. So in order to have self awareness, you have to have a knowledge of self. In order to have self awareness, that means that you have totally drowned out the opinions of other people. You know who you are. You know what you're about. And nobody can tell you any different. And you're aware of like all your flaws. When you're self-aware, you're constantly getting better. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're constantly getting better because you don't believe your own hype. You know, you can look in the mirror and be like, hey, I'm not as good as they say, uh, they say I am. I'm not as bad as they say I am. I'm always just somewhere in that middle. Confidence is self-explanatory. You got to have, you know, confidence in yourself and you know, a real confidence though, not confidence that comes because of what position you're in or you know, how much money you got or what kind of car you're driving, just confidence in you as a human being and you know, hard work is self-explanatory. Yeah, I, I, I think hard work is number one. I think confidence is number two. And uh, I think number three is self-awareness, but that doesn't mean that it's not incredibly important like all these things are incredibly important but uh i think sometimes some delusion is important when you're going after incredibly ambitious dreams i don't think that's delusion i think that's confidence i think that's con and, and, and like somebody well, like somebody like you at some point in life yeah you saw God put something in your in your heart and your mind and say i'm gonna be one of the greatest stand-up comics ever yeah some, something something was inside of you yep. and it gave you that confidence to get on that stage yep. and try out these jokes yep. and you you put in the hard work but yep. it started with an awareness of self. You knowing you're a funny Again, guy, you know bro, who you are. I, I, I hate that it looks like I'm saying that the self-awareness is the least important because all these three things are incredibly important and self-awareness is like the magic trick, really, because knowing things about yourself allows you to like tap into your humanity, which people relate to without knowing things about themselves. Mm -hmm. So like being able to reflect on yourself, someone else will really relate to what you're talking about, even though they don't realize in that moment, you're actually talking about them as well. Mm. So it's so important. But I think sometimes like, if you're really self-aware, sometimes you're like more fair to yourself than you need to be. You know, like I'm hyper critical of, of the things that I create, maybe too critical, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, and, but that's good because it's going to push me to get better. 
But what if I was like really honest with myself? And I was like, no, that was pretty good. And it's like, that's why even confidence Which, is a double-edged sword. It's like you need the confidence to believe you can be anything, but you need to be so self-critical that you try to perfect it to the point where you're at the top of your position. But you got a team. So being that you're aware enough yeah. to know how you feel, so you say, okay, I think this is pretty cool, but let me run it by my team. Yeah. And you have the confidence in yourself to listen to the people around you. Yeah. If they be like, eh, that ain't it, Schultz. You be like, yeah. all right, all right, I can go a little bit harder. You know what I'm saying? Or but you if they be are, the are, most critical. Are, exactly. Yeah. Or if they say, I don't like that, but you're like, nah, this shit slaps you. And you just gotta know me. that just it's right. Me. Yeah. That's confidence. That's you're so right, man. The confidence, you have to have the confidence to know that the thing that you're doing that isn't good enough yet will be great when it gets there and what the, the you know the your, your most potent form of expression yeah dude it, all these things it's really interesting when you break down what qualities lead to success yeah all these things are so interchangeable it, it's hard to rank them but they're all incredibly important alex boss 34 uh, and uh, yeah, they're really they important to have. I just, I, I got, yeah, I just got self awareness for it because I see so many people who lack it, and those people have a really difficult time. Do they in the creative process? Yeah, they you really don't do. feel that there are some people, whether they're happy or unhappy, they're still successful without having self awareness. Oh yeah, that's but why I, I feel like hard work should be one because I've never met a successful person who doesn't work hard. Well, yeah, to that point. Are they experiencing true success? I would say that if you're successful, but you lack self-awareness, you know, I don't know if I want that. Because to yeah. me, those are the people that end up crashing and burning because they don't they, they don't know when they don't know when enough is enough. Yeah, I'm not saying they might be in the happiest state, but I'm just mm -hmm. saying they can still reach yeah, success. Yeah, you can still be successful. So that's why I feel like hard work would have to be number one in for this question. I'm not like yeah. I'm not mad at either. I'm not mad at that either. I'm not mad at that. All right, we done, guys. I think so. We did it. We did it. We did it. As always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart. You think we're intelligent. You think we're brilliant. You're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Peace.